Hello, welcome to this tutorial. Today we are going to talk about common nouns. Let's get started. Okay, so a noun is a word used to identify people, places, or things. These nouns are called common nouns, or a noun is a word used to name a particular one of these, and that is called a proper noun. For example, in the sentence, you can buy coffee at Starbucks, coffee is a common noun. It is a word used to identify a thing. Starbucks, on the other hand, is a proper noun because it is used to identify a particular place. Now, a common noun is a noun showing a class of objects or a concept as opposed to a particular individual. For example, there was a sofa, two chairs, and a wardrobe in the room. Note that the common nouns are general names. They are not capitalized unless they begin a sentence or are part of a title. For example, capitals of the countries are usually very large. The word capital is at the beginning of a sentence, so it's capitalized. And in this sentence, London is the capital of Great Britain. The word capital is not capitalized. Now, when we add S to a noun, it becomes more than one or plural. For example, flower, flowers, dog, dogs. And nouns ending in S, SS, SH, CH, X, Z, or O, we add ES to it so that we can make a plural or more than one. For example, bus. Buses, watch, watches, box, boxes, potato, potatoes. And nouns ending in Y change into I plus ES when we want to make a plural. For example, baby, babies. And nouns ending in F. Or FE change into F, VE plus S to make a plural. For example, life, lives, wolf, wolves. But belief turns into beliefs, chef turns into chefs. Now here, are some nouns that are irregular. For example, the singular form of the word man is man. In the plural, men. Woman, women. Person, people. Child, children. Tooth, teeth. Foot, feet. Mouse, mice. Now let's practice a bit. As earlier mentioned, a common noun is a noun showing a class of objects or a concept as opposed to a particular individual. Now I want you to read the sentence, fruit and vegetables are good for you and underline these nouns. Fruits, vegetables are the nouns. Now again, common nouns are general names. They are not capitalized unless 
they begin a sentence or are part of a title. I want you to read this sentence. Books can help you learn something and underline these nouns. Books. Great. Now again, most of the time we add S to singular nouns to show more than one plural. What is the plural form of the word map? Maps. The word cake? Cakes. And if the singular form ends in S, 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 H, C, H, X, Z, or O, add E, S to make a plural. More than one. The word sandwich? Sandwiches. Cross? Crosses. Fox. Foxes. Tomato. Tomatoes. And if the singular noun ends in Y, again change Y into I and add ES to make a plural. More than one. Try with the word here. Lily. Lilies. And if the singular noun ends in F or FE, F is often changed into VE before adding S to make a plural. Try with the word wife. Wives. And calf? Calves. Okay, so some nouns do not follow any of the rules explained earlier. They are irregular. For example, a mouse is a small rodent. Try to make a plural in this following sentence. Mice can find their way into your house. Okay, now here is a short story using common nouns. I want you to listen as I read so you see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself to work on your own fluency and pronunciation. I'm going grocery shopping in a bit. Could I get you anything? I think we're running out of milk. You should buy that. And I don't mind some cookies or candies. Okay, I'll put it on my list. Anything else? You can't look in the fridge and just buy whatever you feel like we need. Oh, and don't forget to grab the newspaper on your way back home. I'd really appreciate that. Okay. Now time for you to practice on your own. Try to transform the following singular nouns into plural. Light, man, life, lady, tax. Next, find mistakes in the following sentences. A. Don't forget to take your jacket. It's really cold outside today. B. Your foot are really cold. You are freezing. C. Elizabeth is a doctor in a local hospital. D. 
I like high-waisted jeans a lot. I feel really stylish wearing them. E. There are many thieves in this area. Be careful. Now let's check your answers. Light, lights, man, men, life, lives, lady, ladies, tax, taxes. Don't forget to take your jacket. It's really cold outside. Your feet are really cold. You are freezing. Elizabeth is a doctor in a local hospital. I like high-waisted jeans a lot. I feel really stylish wearing them. There are many thieves in this area. Be careful. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hello. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we are going to talk about proper nouns. Let's get started. Now, a noun is a word used to identify people, places, or things. These kinds of nouns are called common nouns. Or, a noun is a word used to name a particular one of these. And those kinds of nouns are called proper nouns. For example, in the sentence we have, you can buy coffee at Starbucks. Now the word Starbucks is a proper noun because it is a word used to name a particular place. Starbucks. And on the other hand, the word coffee is a common noun because it is a word used to identify a thing. Now a proper noun is a noun that refers to a unique thing such as names, names of cities, planets, corporations, etc. But a common noun usually refers to a class of things. For example, London is the capital of Great Britain. London, name of a city, Great Britain, name of a country. Also note that proper nouns are unique names and so they are capitalized. So for example, here we have Olivia wants to travel around Europe next year. The word Olivia is a unique name, so it's capitalized. The same with the word Europe. We should also capitalize proper nouns that are names of festivals. For example, Christmas and Thanksgiving are my two favorite holidays. Now, pro the proper nouns Christmas and Thanksgiving are names of festivals, and so they should be capitalized. We should also capitalize the name of a person's title. For example, everything depends on President Trump and his decision. The proper noun President is the title of Trump, and so it should be capitalized. Also, we should capitalize the names of books, films, plays, and paintings. We use capital letters for the nouns, adjectives, and verbs in the titles. For example, I've just finished reading The Old Man and the Sea. The Old Man and the Sea is the title of the book I've just finished reading. Now, sometimes we use a person's name to refer to something they have created. For example, we were listening to Mozart 
the other day. I'm reading an Irish murder now. Now, when you use a word about a family member, for example, mom, dad, uncle, capitalize it only if the word is being used exactly as you would use a name. In other words, if you were addressing the person directly. If the word is not being used as a name, it's not capitalized. Now, for example, in this sentence we have, please ask dad if he can buy wine on his way home. The word dad is used to address the person directly, so it's capitalized. And in this sentence, is your dad coming over for dinner? The word dad is not capitalized because it's not being used as a name. Now, whenever you see a capitalized word, question whether or not it is a proper noun. Make sure that the capitalized word is in fact a noun as there are also proper adjectives. For example, in this sentence we have Asia is one of the continents of the world. The word Asia is the name of the continent, so it's a proper noun. And in this sentence we have I don't really like Asian food. The word Asian is a proper adjective. It is a word used to describe the noun food. Now, let's review some points and practice a bit. I want you to read the following sentence and underline the nouns that refer to a unique thing. Brenda went to Germany last year. He liked Berlin and Munich the most. Brenda, Germany, Berlin, Munich. Name of a person, country, city, city. Note that we should also capitalize proper nouns that refer to festivals, people's title, the name of books, films, plays, and paintings. Let's start with festivals. Read the following sentence and underline the proper noun that refers to festivals. When are we celebrating Easter this year? Easter. People's title? You need to contact Dr. Drake to receive further information. Doctor. The names of books, films, plays, or paintings. I'm dying to see Heartbreak House. Heartbreak House. Also, sometimes we use a person's name to refer to something they have created. Read the following sentence and find a word that refers to to that something a person has created. I heard that a Van Gogh was sold for twenty million dollars. Van Gogh. Now, when you use a word about a family member, for example, mom, dad, uncle, capitalize it only if the word is being used exactly as you would use a name. In other words, if you were addressing the person directly. Read the following sentences and decide in which sentence the word mom should be capitalized. Please ask mom if she knows that I'll be late. Does your mom know that I'll come home later today?
read. Now, whenever you see a capitalized word, make sure you question whether or not it is a proper noun. Make sure that the capitalized word is in fact a noun as there are also proper adjectives. Now let's practice. At Easter, kids get candies from Easter bunnies. Which Easter is a proper adjective and which is a proper noun? Great. Now here is a short story using proper nouns. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself to work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Emma, what did you get for Christmas? My mom and dad got me a Polaroid. I was beyond happy. Wow, that's such a cool gift. Yeah, I know. And what did you get? My parents bought me a trip to New York for five days. I've never been to the East Coast, so I'm looking forward to it. I'll go there in the summer, though. That's amazing. Don't forget to take photos. Now time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and decide whether the underlined words should be capitalized. A. Honestly, I don't really like Coca-Cola. B. My Aunt Kelly is a wonderful person. C. See the list of 2018 Oscar nominations, including Best Pictures, Best Actors and Actresses, and more. D. I'm sure you like Pride and Prejudice. E. Maybe we should get some fast food for dinner. F. Pam studied engineering at college. G. Texas is the second largest state in the United States by both area and population. H. When I saw a Monet for the first time, I was blown away. I. Kate doesn't like winter months that much. J. Under the U.S. Constitution, each state is given a number of electoral votes in rough proportion to its population. Now, Let's check your answers. Honestly, I don't really like Coca-Cola. Capitalize. My aunt Kelly is a wonderful person. See the list of 2018 Oscar nominations, including Best Picture, Best Actors and Actresses, and more. I'm sure you'd like Pride and Prejudice. Maybe we should get some fast food for dinner. Pam studied engineering at college. Texas is the second largest state in the United States by both area and population. When I saw a Monet for the first time, I was blown away. Kate doesn't like winter months that much. Under the U.S. Constitution, each state is given a number of electoral votes in rough proportion to its population. 
Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hello, welcome to this tutorial. Today we are going to talk about subject pronouns. Let's get started. Now, a subject is the person or thing that performs the action in the sentence or clause. And a subject pronoun is a pronoun that takes the place of a noun as the subject of a sentence. For example, in this sentence we have She told me about her worries. Now the word she is a pronoun and it is the subject of the sentence. And so the word she is a subject pronoun. Note that subject pronouns replace nouns that are the subject of their clause. Have a look at the table below. When we talk about the first person in its singular form, we use I. In plural, we. When we talk about the second person, we use you. In its plural, the same, you. When we talk about the third person, we use he, she, it. Plural, they. Also, we should replace the subject with a subject pronoun to avoid repetition. For example, Mary is a student and Mary is very hardworking. The repetition of the proper noun Mary should be avoided. We should say something like, Mary is a student and she is very hardworking. She refers to Mary. Also note that we use the subject pronoun it when we refer to objects, things, animals, or ideas. For example, love is eternal. It will last forever. The pronoun it refers to the word love. And sometimes, when we don't know the sex of a baby, we can use it. For example, their baby is so small, it only weighs 2 kilos. We also use it when we talk about time, weather, or temperature. For example, what time is it? It's seven o'clock. It's quite cold today. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that subject pronouns replace nouns that are the subject of their clause. So what do you think would be the proper subject pronoun to use to replace the word Helen. She and dog it students they my brother and I we Also note that we should replace the subject with a subject pronoun to avoid repetition. Have a look at the sentence below. Fred and Molly are very good friends. Fred and Molly have known each other since middle school. Try to avoid this repetition by using a subject pronoun. They have known each other 
since middle school. Let's have a look at another sentence over here. Look at the cat. The cat is so cute. Note that the subject pronoun it is used when we refer to objects, things, animals, or ideas. Try to avoid the repetition in this sentence by using the correct subject pronoun. It is so cute. Now sometimes when we don't know the sex of a baby, we can of course use it. Fill in the blanks using the proper subject pronoun in this sentence. The baby didn't sleep well. Kicking all night. It was kicking all night. Remember that we can also use it when we talk about time, weather, or temperature. Have a look at the following sentence and fill in the blanks using the proper subject pronoun. Minus 10 degrees Celsius outside. You should definitely wear a hat. It's 10 degrees Celsius. Now, here is a short story using subject pronouns. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, Make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Shall we go out tonight? The weather is lovely. Yes, it is. Maybe we could go for a walk. I don't feel like eating. It's strange. Are you feeling well? I'm all right, thank you. I was at my grandma's today and she cooked a lot of stuff for lunch. I felt like I was about to explode. I know the feeling. All grandmas are like that. They show their love by feeding their grandkids. Now it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and replace the subject with the appropriate pronoun. A. Kylie is looking for a job at the moment. B. My kids absolutely love reading books. C. The temperature is 25 degrees Celsius today. D. My friends and I like to go on trips together. E. Mrs. Smith is my neighbor. Now, read the following sentences and correct the mistakes you find. A. The dog stole Amanda's hot dog before he ran away. B. My brother likes working out in the morning. He gives him energy for the rest of the day. C. There are raindrops on my window. Are they raining again? D. Her husband is really sweet because her husband brings her breakfast in bed. E. 
You can have ice cream after they have your broccoli. Time to check your answers. He is looking for a job at the moment. They absolutely love reading books. It is 25 degrees Celsius today. We like to go on trips together. She is my neighbor. The dog stole Amanda's hot dog before it ran away. My brother likes working out in the morning. It gives him energy for the rest of the day. There are raindrops on my window. Is it raining again? Her husband is really sweet. He brings her breakfast in bed. You can have ice cream after you eat your broccoli. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hello, welcome to this tutorial. Today we are going to talk about object pronouns. Let's get started. An object is the person or thing that receives the action in the clause or sentence. Now an object pronoun is a pronoun that takes the place of a noun as the object of a sentence. For example, in this sentence she told me about her worries, the word me is an object pronoun because it refers to the person that is receiving the action. Also note that the object pronoun comes after a verb or a preposition. Object pronouns are used to replace nouns that are the direct or indirect objects of a clause. Let's have a look at the table below. When we want to use a pronoun as the subject of a sentence, we use I, you, he, she, it, we, or they. And when we want to use a pronoun as the object of a sentence, we use me, you, him, her, it, us, or them. As earlier stated, object pronouns come either after a verb or a preposition. For example, in this sentence, Ethan asked me to talk to them. The object pronoun me comes after the verb asked, and the object pronoun them comes after the preposition to. Also note that the subject pronoun it and the object pronoun it look the same. For example, do you know the movie Pretty Lady? It is my favorite. In this sentence, the pronoun it is a subject pronoun because it is used as the subject of the sentence. And in this sentence, I've seen it many times. The pronoun it is an object pronoun because it is used as the object of the sentence after a verb. Remember that object pronouns are always the recipients of the action in sentences. In this example over here, for example, in this sentence we have he and me also, remember that object nouns are always the recipients of the action in sentences.
Also, remember that object pronouns are always the recipients of the action in sentences. Now let's have a look at the sentence over here. He and me went to the movies. Now this sentence would be incorrect because the object pronoun me is being used as the subject of the sentence. The correct form would be he and I went to the movies. Let's have a look at another example over here. Mrs. Keith called her and I. Now this sentence is incorrect because the pronoun, the subject pronoun, I, is being used as the object of the sentence. The correct form would be Mrs. Keith called her and me. Also, we should replace the object with an object pronoun to avoid repetition. Let's have a look at an example over here. I can't stop thinking about Amy. I can't stop imagining my future with Amy. Now we can avoid repeating the word Amy by using object pronouns. For example, I can't stop imagining my future with her. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that object pronouns are used to replace nouns that are the direct or indirect objects of a clause or a sentence. Let's have a look at the pronouns below. What is the object pronoun of the subject pronoun I? Me. You. You. He. Him. She. Her. It. It. We. Us. And they them. Also note that object pronouns come either after a verb or a preposition. Now have a look at the sentence below and fill in the blanks using the appropriate object pronoun. My mom asked to do My mom asked me to do it. Note that the subject pronoun it and the object pronoun it look the same. Have a look at the sentences below. In which sentence is the pronoun it a subject pronoun? And in which sentence is the pronoun it? object pronoun. I like this book a lot. It is one of my favorites. I often read it when I'm feeling down. In the first sentence, the pronoun it is a subject pronoun. And in the second sentence, the pronoun it is an object pronoun. Remember that object nouns are always the recipients of the action in sentences. Try to correct the following sentence. John invited them and I to his party. John invited them and me to his party. Also, we should replace the object with an object pronoun to avoid repetition. Have a look at the sentence below. 
and try to avoid the repetition in the second sentence by using an object pronoun. You can't talk with Greg every hour. Constantly being on the phone with Greg leaves you with zero free time. Constantly being on the phone with him leaves you with zero free time. Here is a short story using object pronouns. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. What should I get them? It's their anniversary, but I can't think of a gift. It should be something cheap, but yet memorable. Why don't you give them something that you made yourself? Maybe a poster with their photos that they haven't seen? I think they'll be happy to get it. I knew I could turn to you. This is a great idea. I'll definitely do it. Now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with the appropriate object pronouns. A. I saw the way Kate talks to Jeffrey. I am sure that she is in love with... B. I can't find my glasses. Maybe that's because I'm wearing... C. Is that Mike's new girlfriend? Don't ask me. Ask... D. Why is he always talking about Liz? He obviously likes... E. Amy doesn't want to be in the same room with Nick and... I think she doesn't like us. F. What's the title of the movie we saw last night? I don't remember. G. Your brothers are being very noisy. Could you ask to be quieter? H. I can't stop thinking about his words. It's been bugging for a long time. I. Don't you like apples? I absolutely love. J. Why don't they invite over? My husband and I are very nice people. Now, let's check your answers. I saw the way Kate talks to Jeffrey. I am sure she is in love with him. I can't find my glasses. Maybe that's because I'm wearing them? Is that Mike's new girlfriend? Don't ask me. Ask them. Why is he always talking about Liz? He obviously likes her. Amy doesn't want to be in the same room with Nick and me. I think she doesn't like us. What's the title of the movie we saw last night? I don't remember it. Your brothers are being very noisy. Could you ask them to be quieter? I can't stop thinking about his words. It's been bugging me for a long time. Do you like apples? I absolutely love them. Why don't they invite us over? My husband and I are very nice people. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hello! Welcome to this tutorial. Today we are going to talk about articles. A. 
an, and the. Let's get started. Articles are words that define a noun as specific or unspecific. Now, in the English language, there are two types of articles. One is indefinite, a or an, and the other is definite, the. Let's have a look at the example over here. I'm a nurse. The hospital I'm working in is huge. Now the article A defines the noun nurse, which is unspecific. And the article the defines the noun hospital, which is specific. The indefinite article takes two forms, a or an. Now use the indefinite article a when it precedes a word that begins with a consonant. And use the indefinite article an when it precedes a word that begins with a vowel. Let's have a look at the following examples. A table an umbrella, a university, an honest person. Note that the indefinite article a indicates that a noun refers to a general idea rather than a particular thing. Have a look at the following sentence. What does a fox say? The article a defines the noun fox, which is general. And we use an or a when the listener does not know which person or thing we are talking about. Have a look at the following example. Helen's brother works in a factory. I don't know which factory exactly. A defines the noun factory. The factory is unknown. And if we refer to something for the first time, it will be new information for the listener. And so we use a or an. And when referring to the same thing again, make sure to use the because now the listener knows what we are talking about. Have a look at the following sentence. I bought a new computer. It's really great. The computer is much better than the previous one. New computer, the computer. Note that the definite article is the word the, and it limits the meaning of a noun to one particular thing. We use the when it is clear which thing or person we are talking about. Let's have a look at the sentence below. The cake is in the fridge. I know that Kate made it. The listener knows where the cake is and who made it. So we use the article the. Note that we also use the definite article the with a, nationalities and other groups. For example, the French, the Italian, the old, the poor. B, with time. For example, in the past, in the future, but at present. C. With superlatives. For example, you are the first one. D. Musical instruments. I played the piano as a kid. E. With countries which are a group or plural. 
for example, the US, the UK, the United Arab Emirates, the Netherlands. F. Names of ships. We sailed on the Claudia. G. Oceans. The Pacific, the Atlantic. H. Rivers. The Amazon, the Nile. Note that we use zero article with plural and uncountable nouns when we are generally talking about something. Have a look at the examples below. Dogs are not allowed in that shop. In this sentence, we are talking about dogs in general. And in this sentence, the dogs next door were barking at night. We are talking about the particular dogs, the dogs next door. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use the indefinite article A when it precedes a word that begins with a consonant. And we use the indefinite article AN when it precedes a word that begins with a vowel. Have a look at the following list of words and fill in the blank using the appropriate article. Apple an apple European country a European country talented actor a talented actor union a union monk a monk also note that the indefinite article A indicates that a noun refers to a general idea rather than a particular thing. Have a look at the sentence below and fill in the gap using the appropriate article. Should I get her gift? I've just met her. Should I get her a gift? Now, if we refer to something for the first time, it will be new information for the listener. So we must use a or an. And when referring to the same thing again, make sure to use the, because now the listener knows what we're talking about. Have a look at the sentence below and fill in the gap using the appropriate article. Well, well, I bought dress for the upcoming party. I'll go to a spa, get a hairdo, and I'll look amazing in dress. Well, I bought a dress for the upcoming party. I'll go to a spa, get a hairdo, and I'll look amazing in the dress. Note that we use the definite article THE with nationalities and other groups. Time, superlatives, musical instruments, countries, which are a group or plural, names of ships, oceans, and rivers. Have a look at the examples below. The Russians, the British, the sick, the educated. In the near future, but at present. The best performance, to play the flute, the UK, the Netherlands, to sail on the Mary, the Indian Ocean, the Thames. Also note that we use zero article with plurals and uncountable nouns when we are generally talking about something, as in this sentence below. fruit. And vegetables are food for your health. Here is a short story using articles a, an, and the. Listen as I read so you see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, 
make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself to work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Liz, can I get you anything? A cup of coffee would be nice. I feel extremely exhausted. I haven't thought that flying over the Atlantic would be the worst trip I've ever taken. And you know that I hate train rides the most? Well, the flight was delayed too, so you were stuck at the airport for a longer period of time. I'm just hoping that in the near future, we'll build a teleport. Then traveling from the U.S. to the Netherlands won't take that long. I wish it were like that. Here's your coffee. Thank you. Now time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with a, an, or the. And note that sometimes no article is needed. A. Dog that bit me ran away. Wounds were treated by doctor. Dr. Smith is professional. B. Rabbits are small mammals in family leporidae. C. Love is wonderful thing. D. Olivia is English teacher. She's not working at present. E. I didn't want to go parking lot, so I went home on foot. It was only 15 minute walk. Now, let's check your answers. The dog that bit me ran away. The wounds were treated by the doctor. Dr. Smith is a professional. Rabbits are small mammals in the family Leporidae. Love is a wonderful thing. Olivia is an English teacher. She's not working at present. I didn't want to go to the parking lot, so I went home on foot. It was only a 15 minute walk. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hello, welcome to this tutorial. Today, we are going to talk about demonstratives. This, that, these, and those. Let's get started. Demonstratives are words that show which person or thing is being referred to. Now, demonstratives show where an object event or person is in relation to the speaker. Note that they can refer to a physical or psychological closeness or distance. Now let's have a look at the example over here. This is Hugh and that is Kevin. Now the demonstrative this is referring to where Hugh is, who is physically close. And the demonstrative that is referring to where Kevin is, who is physically distant. Now when what we are referring to is near the speaker, we use the adverb here. And when it's far from the speaker, we use there. And when the noun is singular and uncountable, we use this for when it's near the speaker and that for when it's far from the speaker. But when the noun is plural 
and countable, we use these for when it's near the speaker and those when it's far from the speaker. Remember that demonstratives can be placed before the noun or the adjective that modifies the noun. Let's have a look at the examples below. That old man stole my purse. The demonstrative that modifies the adjective old, which modifies the noun man. These oranges are delicious. These modifies oranges. Also note that demonstratives can appear before a number by itself when the noun is understood from context. Have a look at the sentence over here. I'll take this one, please. I'll take this watermelon, please. Now these sentences are both the same. In this sentence, we have watermelon, which is understood from context. So instead of saying, I'll take this watermelon, please, we can say, I'll take this one, please. One referring to watermelon. Note that demonstratives can be used by themselves when the noun they modify is understood from context. Have a look at these sentences below. Those aren't yours. Put them back. Those shoes aren't yours. Put them back. Shoes in this sentence is understood from context. And so we can use the demonstrative by itself, as in the example over here. Those aren't yours. Put them back. Now, when talking about events, the near demonstratives are often used to refer to the present, while the far demonstratives often refer to the past. Have a look at the sentences below. This situation is quite unstable. The demonstrative this is referring to a present event situation. That event made me realize how important my family is to me. In this sentence, the demonstrative that is referring to a past event that made me realize how important my family is to me. Now time for us to review and practice a bit. Remember that we use demonstratives to show where an object, event, or person is in relation to the speaker. Have a look at the sentence below and fill in the gaps using the appropriate demonstratives. This is Mary and these are my parents, John and Anne. Also, remember that demonstratives are placed before the noun or the adjective that modifies the noun. Have a look at the sentence over here. Fill in the gap using the appropriate demonstrative. Can you see that red car over there? I think I've seen it somewhere else before. Note that we can place demonstratives before a number by itself when the noun is understood from context. Have a look at the sentence over here and find the noun that can be understood from context and then replace it with a number. Note to use demonstratives before a number. These earrings aren't as nice as those 
earrings. These two aren't as nice as those two. Also note that demonstratives can't be used by themselves when the noun they modify is understood from context. Have a look at the sentence below and find the noun that the demonstrative modifies and that can be understood from context. The gossip about Pam has nothing to do with me. This has nothing to do with me. Note that when talking about events, the near demonstratives are often used to refer to the present, while the far demonstratives are often used to refer to the past. Have a look at the sentence over here and fill in the gap using the appropriate demonstrative. This job was a waste of time. I didn't get any experience. Here is a short story using demonstratives. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Good morning. How can I help you? Hi. I'm looking for a formal dress. Could you help me find one? Yes, of course. Maybe we could try this one. We got this dress only a day ago. I'm sure you'll be the only one wearing it. Honestly, I don't really like this color. Maybe you could show me that one over there? I like the print a lot. Surely. And what about the shoes? I have a picture on my phone. I want something like that. Um, I think those ones are quite similar. You have excellent taste. Let me get those for you. Now time for you to practice on your own. Have a look at the following sentences and fill in the gaps using this or these. A. Hey, why are you scared? Pointing at a snake. B. Which bags are yours? Once. Could you help me with them? C. You are always late. It's not true. I'm right on time. D. Harry Potter? Movie is my absolute favorite. E. People are boring. I might leave the party early. F. Is Mr. Johns? No. Is Mr. Adams? Mr. Johns is over there. G. Is for me? I'm so touched. H. Tickets are so expensive. I don't know if I can afford them. I. Is unbelievable. I can't understand why they did to her. G. Are the books you asked for? Now let's check your answers. Hey, why are you scared? This! Pointing at a snake.
Which bags are yours? These ones. Could you help me with them? You are always late. This is not true. I am right on time. Harry Potter? This movie is my absolute favorite. These people are boring. I might leave the party early. Is this Mr. Johns? No, this is Mr. Adams. Mr. Johns is over there. This is for me? I'm so touched. These tickets are so expensive. I don't know if I can afford them. This is unbelievable. I can't understand why they did this to her. These are the books you asked for. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hello, welcome to this tutorial. Today we are going to talk about distributives, all and half. Let's get started. Distributive determiners, or simply distributives, refer to a group of people or things and to individual members of the group. Note that they show different ways of looking at the individual within a group, and they express how something is distributed, shared, or divided. Now let's have a look at the example over here. All people want to love and to be loved. The distributive all refers to people and it tells us how many people want to love and how many want to be loved. Note that the distributive determiner all is used to talk about a whole group with a special emphasis on the fact that nothing has been left out. Note that all can be used with uncountable nouns and plural countable nouns by itself. Now in this usage, it refers to the group as a concept rather than as individuals. Have a look at the example below. All parents want the best for their children. The distributive determiner all is referring to parents everywhere. All can be used with uncountable nouns and plural countable nouns preceded by the or a possessive adjective. Now in these uses, the word of can be added just after all and with no change in meaning. Have a look at the sentence over here. Have you eaten all the cookies in the jar? Have you eaten all of the cookies in the jar? Both sentences have the same meaning. The only difference? In the sentence we add of, which does not change the meaning of the sentence. Also note that all can be used with plural pronouns preceded by of. Have a look at the sentence below. All of us are going to be there tonight. Us, plural, of. All can be used in questions or exclamations with uncountable nouns preceded by the demonstratives this or that. Or all can be used with countable nouns preceded by these or those. Now, in these uses, the word of can be added just after all with no change in meaning. 
Now let's have a look at the examples below. Look at all the snow out there. This sentence is an exclamation. The distributive all is preceded by the demonstrative this, which modifies the uncountable noun snow. Let's have a look at the second sentence. What are all these people doing in our house? This is a question. And the distributive all is preceded by the demonstrative these, which modifies the countable noun people. Now let's have a look at the distributive have. The distributive determiner have is used to talk about a whole group divided into two. Have can't be used as a distributive in several different patterns. Let's have a look at those patterns. First, have can refer to measurements if it is followed by an indefinite article a or an and then a noun. Let's have a look at the example below. I'll be back in half an hour. Half an hour meaning 30 minutes. Second, half can be used with plural pronouns preceded by off. For example, in the sentence we have only half of us are going to be there tonight, meaning that if we are 10, only half of us means only 5 of us are going to be there tonight. And half can be used with nouns preceded by the, a, an, a demonstrative, or a possessive adjective. Now, in this case, the meaning refers to a concrete physical division. Note that the word of can be added just after half with no change in meaning. Let's have a look at the following examples. Half the people have already left the party, meaning that if 50 people were at the party, 25 of them have left the party. Putting half a kilo of sugar in the topping will ruin the cake. Meaning that we have to put just a quarter of sugar in the topping, not half a kilo. I want half of that cake. Meaning that I do not want the whole cake. I want half of the cake. Sorry, but I used half of your eggs making breakfast today. Meaning that if there were 12 eggs, I used only 6 eggs for making breakfast. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use all with uncountable nouns and plural countable nouns by itself. Now, in this usage, it refers to the group as a concept rather than as individuals. Have a look at the sentence below and fill in the gap using the appropriate distributive. All students are sleep deprived during the finals. Also remember that all can be used in questions and exclamations with uncountable nouns preceded by this or that. Or we can use all with countable nouns preceded by these or those. Now remember that in these uses, the word of can be added just after all and with no change in meaning. Have a look at this 
sentence over here. And fill in the gap using the appropriate distributive. Look at all these cute puppies. I want to adopt one. Also, remember that we use have when we refer to measurements. Now, in these cases, have needs to be followed by an indefinite article, a, or an, and a noun. Have a look at the sentence below and fill in the gap using the appropriate distributive. Sarah always runs half a mile in the morning. And note that we use have with nouns preceded by the, a, an, a demonstrative or a possessive adjective. Now, in this case, the meaning refers to a concrete physical division. Have a look at the sentence over here. Fill in the gap using the appropriate distributive. I need to get rid of half of my clothes. They are too small for me. And remember that all and half can be used with plural pronouns, preceded by of. Have a look at the sentences below and fill in the gap using the appropriate distributives. All of them were invited to the party. Half of them were invited to the party. Here is a short story using distributives. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Are all of you going to the party tonight? No, I think only half of us are going, not all of us have free time in the evenings. But all of our staff are going to be there. I think it would be nice to celebrate Halloween all together. Think of all the fun stuff we can do. Yeah, but half of our employees are married and have kids. It's tough to find time for things like that. Now time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and find mistakes. A. My dad usually runs half miles a day. B. All parents want his kids to be happy. C. Think of all money that went into the preparation. D. Half of the students was present today. E. Look at these cute shoes. I want to buy them. Look at the following table below and match the sentences accordingly. A. Half of them ignored our dinner party. B. You better not eat this burger. C. Look at all these balloons. D. Where are all the apples? E. I don't know if this movie is worth seeing. 1. Are they having a party over there? 2. I bought a kilo yesterday. 3. Only half of the reviews are positive. 4. Think of all the calories. 5. That was very disrespectful of them.
Now, let's check your answers. My dad usually runs half a mile a day. All parents want their kids to be happy. Think of all the money that went into the preparation. Half of the students were present today. Look at these cute shoes. I want to buy them. Half of them ignored our dinner party. That was very disrespectful of them. You'd better not eat this burger. Think of all the calories. Look at all these balloons. Are they having a party over there? Where are all the apples? I bought a kilo yesterday. I don't know if this movie is worth seeing. Only half the reviews are positive. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hello! Welcome to this tutorial. Today we are going to talk about distributives. Each and every. Let's get started. Distributive determiners or simply distributives refer to a group of people or things and to individual members of the group. Note that they show different ways of looking at the individual within a group and they express how something is distributed, shared or divided. Have a look at the example over here. Each person is unique. Every person is unique. Now the distributive each and every are both related to describing the members of a group. These distributives can only be used with countable nouns by being placed before the nouns. Now in many cases they are interchangeable but there is a subtle difference between them. Let's have a look at that subtle difference between each and every. Now, each is used to describe and highlight an individual member of a group or multiple individuals. Note that by using each, you recognize the item is a part of a group, but that it also needs to be pointed out as a singular item too. Have a look at the example over here. Each book on the shell had a unique cover. The distributive each refers to the countable noun book, which is part of other books on the shelf. Note that each can be used with plural nouns and pronouns, but it must be followed by of, as in the example over here. Each of the pupils received a Christmas card. Pupils is a plural noun. Also, each can be used after the subject or at the end of the sentence. Let's have a look at the following examples. My siblings each have their own room. After the subject. My mother gave my sister and I $20 each. This means that she gave $20 to each of us. Now let's have a look at the distributive every. By contrast, every is a way of referring to the group as a collection of individual members. Note that every cannot be used with plural nouns. Let's have a look at the example over here. Every boy in my class wanted that computer game. Now this sentence would be incorrect because boys is plural and we cannot use every 
with plural nouns. The correct form would be Every boy in my class wanted that computer game. Also, remember that every can express different points in a series, especially with time expressions. For example, in the sentence we have Every morning Philip goes for a run. Now, in the sentence, the distributive every expresses a time expression, which is morning. And in the sentence, and every time Anne would forgive him, the distributive every expresses the word time, which tells us about what Anne does every time in a series. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use each to describe and highlight an individual member of a group. By using each, you recognize the item is part of a group, but that it also needs to be pointed out as a singular item too. Have a look at the sentence below and fill in the gap using the appropriate distributive. Each contestant had something special about them. Now remember that each can be used with plural nouns and pronouns, but it must be followed by off. Now have a look at the sentence below and fill in the gaps using the appropriate distributives. Each of us wanted to volunteer for the project and each of the members filled in the application form. Also, note that each can be used after the subject or at the end of a sentence. Again, have a look at the sentences below and fill in the gaps using the appropriate distributives. My parents each have their own car. I bought three pairs of shoes, $30 each, meaning that each pair of shoes cost $30. Remember that the distributive every, by contrast, is a way of referring to the group as a collection of individual members. Note that every cannot be used with plural nouns. Have a look at the sentence below and provide the correct version of the sentence. Every people want to live a happy life. Every person wants to live a happy life. Also, remember that every can express different points in a series, especially with time expression. So have a look at the sentence below and fill in the gap using the appropriate distributive. Every time I say something, my brother gets annoyed. Here is a short story using distributives, each and every. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Have you heard of Crystal's upcoming wedding? They are throwing a huge party with 300 guests invited. That's a lot of people. Yeah, and each of the guests received a handwritten invitation. Could you believe that? Maybe they wanted everyone to feel welcomed. I could have never done something like that. That's just insane and sounds like a total waste of time. Well... To each his own, I suppose. 
Now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the correct distributive. A. My two sisters, each or every, have their own business. B. I live with a roommate, so we are paying $500 every or each. C. Every or each of the board directors sign the papers. D. Stop being so judgmental. As they say to every or each his own. E. Every or each day I read 20 pages of a book. Now read the following sentences and rewrite them so that they have similar meaning and contain the distributive in brackets. A. Whenever I tell you to calm down, you snap at me. B. Susan, Megan, Kelly, and I got free tickets to the cinema. C. The police searched all the buildings in the neighborhood. D. Different people like different things. E. I was looking for you everywhere, and all of our friends were trying to reach you too. Now let's check your answers. My two sisters each have their own business. I live with a roommate, so we are paying five hundred dollars each. Each of the board directors sign the papers. Stop being so judgmental, as they say, to each his own. Each or every day I read twenty pages of a book. Note that both variants are possible, though every is used more often. Every time I tell you to calm down, you snap at me. Each of us got free tickets to the cinema. The police searched every building in the neighborhood. To each his own. Each of our friends was trying to reach you too. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hello, welcome to this tutorial. Today we are going to talk about verb conjugation. Persons. Let's get started. Verb conjugation refers to how a verb changes to indicate a different person, number, tense, or mood. Let's have a look at the following example. I'm a student. Now, in this sentence, the subject is in the first person. It is singular. We are using the present simple and an indicative mood. Remember, the verbs should be conjugated with regards to person. Depending on the subject, a verb can stand in the first, second, or third person. Now let's have a look at the table below. Now when the subject is in the first person and it's singular, we use I. Plural, we. When the subject is in the second person and it's singular, we use you. Plural, you. And when the subject is in the third person and it's singular, we use he. 
she or it. Plural, they. Now, as you can see, the pronouns I, we, refer to the first person, you to the second, he, she, it, and they to the third person. Have a look at the examples below. We work on Saturdays. We is in the first person. You need to take a break. You is in the second person. It is snowing outside. It, third person. Now, usually, we assume the person of the verb in the sentence automatically, as we almost always state the subject explicitly. Let's have a look at the example over here. Sarah has signed up for a yoga class. Now, Sarah can be substituted with the pronoun she, which is in the third person. Note that the verb to be is irregular and has three forms in present tenses and two forms in past tenses. Now, these forms depend on the person expressed by the subject. Have a look at the table below. When the subject is in the first person and we are using the present tense, we say I am or we are. In the second person, you are, you are. And the third person, he, she, it, is. Or they are. And when we use the first person in the past tense, we say, I was, we were. Second person, you were, you were. And in the third person, he, she, it, was, they, were. Now let's review and practice a bit. Have a look at the following sentences and substitute the subject with the correct pronoun. First sentence, Mrs. Glare is the friendliest person on earth. She is the friendliest person on earth. A bird is sitting on my window sill. It is sitting on my window sill. The Lakers are going to stay at our place for three days. They are going to stay at our place for three days. Now have a look at the following sentences and fill in the gaps using the correct form of the verb to be. My parents watching a movie, Steve playing outside, and I melting on the couch. My parents are watching a movie, Steve is playing outside, and I am melting on the couch. Will you free tonight? I'd really appreciate if we could spend the evening together. Will you be free tonight? I'd really appreciate if we could spend the evening together. It's so cold yesterday. And as always, I had already put my winter clothes away in the closet. It was so cold yesterday, and as always, I had already put my winter clothes away into the closet. Here is a short story using verb conjugation. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. 
After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. When I was your age, I wanted to become a nurse. I liked the idea of helping people when they needed the most. Why aren't you a nurse then, Grandma? Well, sweetie, we grow up, and sometimes our goals change. I'm a teacher now, and I have never regretted my choice. And you are helping people anyway. That's true. Now time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and decide whether the verb stands in the first, second, or third person. A. Why can't we find a common ground? B. You should be attentive to details. C. These jeans are too tight. D. I was too shy to say a word. E. The pots will be attending the ceremony as well. And now, read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with the correct form of the verb to be. A. You must... Kidding me! How... This possible? B. If we invited, we need to think of a present. C. We have here for ages. We can't wait any longer. D. Someone called you when you running outside. E. I. So frustrated. Why? It's so difficult to find a paid internship now. Now, let's check your answers. Why can't we find common ground? First person. You should be attentive to details. Second person. These jeans are too tight. Third person. I was too shy to say a word. First person. The pots will be attending the ceremony as well. Third person. You must be kidding me. How is this possible? If we are invited, we need to think of a present. We have been here for ages. We can't wait any longer. Someone called you when you were running outside. I am so frustrated. Why is it so difficult to find a paid internship now? Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hello, welcome to this tutorial. Today we are going to talk about the past simple tense. Let's get started. We use the past simple when we talk about an action which happened at a definite time in the past. Now this tense emphasizes that the action is finished. Note that we can also use this tense to talk about how someone felt about something. Let's have a look at the dialogue over here. When was your wedding? It was three years ago. I was beyond happy to marry the love of my life. Now in this sentence, when was your wedding? The past simple is used to ask a question about a past event. And in this sentence, it was three years ago, it is used to describe exactly when this event took place. 
and in this sentence i was beyond happy to marry the love of my life the past simple is used to talk about how that person felt and with infinitives all we have to do is add ed to create the past simple tense have a look at the examples below he worked part-time as a waiter we liked our stay at the hotel note that all persons have the same form now when a word ends with a consonant plus y we keep the consonant and turn the y into ied when we want to create the past simple have a look at the following words cry cried try tried and when a word ends with a vowel and a consonant we keep the vowel double the consonant and add ed as in the example below stop stopped regret regretted and make sure to use the past tense form of the irregular verbs to make sentences in the past simple for example be turns into was or were eat ate drink drank now the past tense form of the verb be depends on the person of the subject have a look at the tables below i was we were you were you were he she or it was they were now let's have a look at the use of did or did not plus verb now let's start off with a positive sentence his sister lived in Sutton London the negative form of the sentence would be his sister did not live in Sutton she lived in Harrow the question form of the sentence would be did his sister live in Sutton where did his sister live in London note that we can use yesterday last night not a long time ago two years ago etc to create the past simple tense have a look at the examples below Shakespeare died in 1616 Ryan did not go to work yesterday. He got sick. When did you move to Spain? I moved there not a long time ago. Note that we use did or did not with the verb to have. Have a look at the sentence below. I didn't have enough money to buy a new computer note how we used didn't with the verb have but we do not use did with the verb to be was or were rather we use it as follow why were you so angry I wasn't angry this was my usual self now let's review and practice a bit read the following sentence and add ed to the bare infinitive of the regular verb to make sentences in the past simple julie to pass her exam this march julie passed her exam this march 
Remember that we use contracted forms to make negative sentences. I'll, am, etc. Julie not to pass her exam this March. Julie didn't pass her exam this March. Note that we use past tense form of the irregular verbs to make sentences in the past simple. Read the following sentence and change the irregular verb into the past simple. Jake to eat tons of fast food as a kid. Jake ate tons of fast food as a kid. Also, remember that we use contracted forms to make negative sentences. Read the following sentence and turn it into a negative sentence. Jake not to eat tons of fast food as a kid. Jake didn't eat tons of fast food as a kid. Now read the following sentences and make the correct form. Make sure to pay attention to spelling. I forgot when was the last time I to cry. I forgot when was the last time I cried. Pete to stay at home last night. Pete stayed at home last night. My mom to drop her phone in the pool. My mom dropped her phone in the pool. Now read the following sentence and use the correct form of the verb to be in the past tense. I to be hungry and wanted to buy some Italian food, but my friends not to be eager to join me. I was hungry and wanted to buy some Italian food, but my friends were not eager to join me. Look at the sentence below and find the time markers. It felt like the party was just last night, but actually it was three weeks ago. Last night? Three weeks ago. Here is a short story using the past simple tense. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Mom, do you have a minute? Sure, kid. What's up? When was the last time you went to a beauty salon? Well, I, I don't remember. Maybe it was a year ago. And when was the last time you had a night out with dad? I'm not sure. It was definitely a long time ago. And what did you do last night? I stayed at home with your dad. We fell asleep watching some boring movie on TV. I bought two tickets to Costa Rica. You need a vacation, Mom. Now time for you to practice on your own. Write the correct form of the following sentences. A. Nick's mother not want to. A. Nick's mother not to want to stay at home the whole day, so she to sign up for Spanish classes. B. I to run every day when I to be a teen, but I don't know that anymore. C. Where you or to be last night.
I to try calling you, but you not to pick up the phone. There are two mistakes in each sentences below. Find those mistakes and correct them. A. Kim goed on a date with David the last night, but didn't call him afterwards. B. How you did get this job? There were so many people ready to kill for it. C. We didn't invite it Anne to the party. No one really likes her after she bad-mouthed Kristen. D. Yesterday, I driven to Houston to see Dan. We went it to high school together. And now, answer the following questions. A. Where did you grow up? B. What did you do last night? C. When was the last time you went on a trip? Now, let's check your answers. Nick's mother didn't want to stay at home the whole day, so she signed up for Spanish classes. I ran every day when I was a teen, but I don't do that anymore. Where were you last night? I tried calling you, but you didn't pick up the phone. Kim went on a date with David last night, but didn't call him afterwards. How did you get this job? There were so many people ready to kill for it. We didn't invite Anne to the party. No one really likes her after she bad-mouthed Kristen. Yesterday, I drove to Houston to see Dan. We went to high school together. I grew up in Nashville, Tennessee. I went clubbing with my friends last night. I went on a trip to Germany last year. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hello! Welcome to this tutorial. Today, we are going to talk about the present simple tense. Let's get started. Now, we use the present simple when we talk about things in general. Note that we use this tense to say that something happens all the time, happens repeatedly, and is true in general. Have a look at the example over here. Jane works as a barista. Her shift begins at 7 a.m. Now in the first sentence, Jane works as a barista is the general truth. And in this sentence, her shift begins at 7 a.m. It shows that this it's something that happens repeatedly, all the time. Now, when we use the first person, the verb does not change. But when we use the third person, he, she, or it, we add S to the verb. Have a look at the example below. I like apples, but my father likes grapes. Father is in the third person, so we add S to the verb like. And over here, I is in the first person, so we do not change the verb like. But when the verb ends in O, S, C, H, S, H, or X, we add E, S to the verb. For example, in this sentence, we have, My sister watches TV in the evening, and my brother does his homework. Note 
that we added es to the verb that ends in o and es to the verb that ends in ch. Remember that such verbs as to be and to have are irregular. Have a look at the table below. I am, we are, you are, you are, he, she, it, is, they are. I have, we have, you have, you have, he, she, it, has, they have. Note the difference between be and am. Have a look at the differences below. I have got a car. I have a car. Now let's have a look at the use of do not and does not plus verb. Have a look at the examples below. Let's start off with a positive sentence. He gets up at six o'clock every morning. The negative form of this sentence would be He does not get up at six o'clock every morning. He gets up at seven. In the question form, does he get up at six o'clock every morning? Another question form, when does he get up? Now we can add time markers such as always, often, usually, sometimes, rarely, never, every day, etc. to the present simple tense. Let's have a look at the examples below. I usually cook at home, but my friends always eat at the local cafe. Kim is always late for classes. Note that we place these time markers right before the verb. Cook, usually cook. Always eat. Always late. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that in the present simple, we use the bare infinitive of the verb. And in the third person singular, we add S to the verb. Now read the following sentence and provide the appropriate form of the following verbs in the present simple. Agatha to hate when her little brothers to leave toys in the living room. Agatha hates when her little brothers leave toys in the living room. Also, remember that we add ES in the third person singular if the verb ends in O, S, CH, SH, and X. Read the following sentence and provide the appropriate form of the following verbs in the present simple. Noah to wash the dishes and his wife to cook dinner. Noah washes the dishes and his wife cooks dinner. Note that such verbs as to be and to have are irregular. Have a look at the following sentence and again provide the appropriate form of the following verbs in the present simple. My mom's family to be quite big. She to have four brothers and three sisters. My mom's family is quite big. She has four brothers and three sisters. Also note that we form the negative forms of sentences by using do not or does not. Read the following sentence and use the contracted forms of the verbs. 
James, not to like reading. I, not to get how it is possible. James doesn't like reading. I don't get how it is possible. Now let's practice the use of time markers. Read the following sentences and put the time markers in their appropriate place. People in Britain drink tea every day. The sun rises in the east always. She is tired after work usually. People in Britain drink tea every day. The sun always rises in the east. She is usually tired after work. Here is a short story using the present simple tense. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Hello? What's your name? Oh, hi. My name's Sarah. And yours? I'm Alex. Nice to meet you, Sarah. Nice to meet you, too. So, where do you come from? I come from Germany. And where are you from? I'm from the UK. Oh, I have a lot of friends from the UK. You probably have a great sense of humor. I'm not sure about that. I don't always get our jokes. You're an exception then. Take that as a compliment. Now time for you to practice the use of the present simple tense on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the correct phrase. A. Excuse me, do you know or does you know the time? B. My sister always is or is always in a hurry. C. What time you go or do you go to bed on Fridays? Now read the following sentences and write the correct answer. A. Kelly to stay or often at home on Saturdays to work on her projects. B. Her brother not to use the internet, he to like everything the old-fashioned way. C. When you or to get home, we need to talk. D. You or to know, Lucy. She to be my friend from college. And now, Answer the following questions. A. What do you do for a living? B. What are your hobbies? C. What does your typical Sunday look like? Now let's check your answers. Excuse me, do you know the time? My sister is always in a hurry. What time do you go to bed on Fridays? Kelly often stays at home on Saturdays to work on her projects. Her brother doesn't use the internet. He likes everything the old-fashioned way.
When do you get home? We need to talk. Do you know Lucy? She is my friend from college. I work as a teacher. I teach second grade. I like painting and reading. I sometimes go hiking. I wake up really late, have a big breakfast, and watch TV all day. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hello, welcome to this tutorial. Today we are going to talk about subject verb agreement. Let's get started. The subject verb agreement is the correspondence of a verb with its subject in person. First, second, or third. And number, singular or plural. Have a look at the example over here. Liz is an accountant and she has a typical 8 to 5 job. Note that the verb is corresponds with the subject Liz, which is in the first person and singular. And the verb has corresponds with the pronoun she, which is in the third person and singular. Remember that subjects and verbs must agree with one another in person, first, second, or third. Have a look at the table below and note the subject verb agreement rules of the verb to be in the present tense. In the first person, singular, I am, plural, we are, second person, singular, you are, plural, you are, third person, singular, he, she, it is. Plural, they are. Have a look at the example over here. I am a student. First person. My brother is a pupil. Third person. Brother. And you are a teacher. Second person. You are. Note that subjects and verbs must agree with one another in number, singular or plural. Thus, if a subject is singular, its verb must also be singular. And if a subject is plural, its verb must also be plural. Have a look at the example below. She cooks dinner and her brothers make breakfast. The verb make corresponds with the noun brothers, which is plural. And the verb cooks corresponds with she, which is singular. And when the subject of the sentence is composed of two or more nouns or pronouns connected by the conjunction and, make sure to use a plural verb. For example, Brothers and sisters don't often get along. Brothers and sisters are connected by the conjunction end. And so we use the plural form of the verb do and get. Don't get. Note that the words each, each one, either, neither, Everyone, everybody, anyone, anybody, nobody, somebody, someone, and no one are singular. And so you must use a singular verb. Have a look at the following examples. Each of these suggestions is interesting. Someone was standing at the door. Also note that when two or more singular nouns or pronouns are connected by OR or NOR, make sure to use a singular verb. Have a look at the example below. Either your mother 
or dad needs to contact me. Remember that when a compound subject contains both a singular and a plural noun or pronoun joined by or or nor, the verb should agree with the part of the subject that is closer to the verb. And that is also called the rule of proximity. Have a look at the examples below. The teacher or the students write homework on the board. Note how the teacher is singular, but the students is plural. And so the verb write needs to be in its plural form. Second example, the students or the teacher writes homework on the board. Again, note how the teacher is in its singular form and students is in a plural form. The verb write is in its singular form because the subject that is closer to the verb is singular. Also remember that in sentences beginning with there is or there are, the subject follows the verb, and that is also called the inverted subject. As there is not the subject, the verb agrees with what follows. For instance, in this example, we have there is a book on the table. There is not the subject, book is. So the verb must agree with what is followed. Book. There are books on the table. Again, are agrees with the subject books, which is in its plural form. Also note that the subject verb agreement with words that indicate portion. For example, a lot, a majority, some, all. Now, if the noun after of is singular, make sure to use a singular verb. And if it is plural, use a plural verb. Have a look at the following examples. There is a lot of fuss around his arrival. The verb is must agree with the subject fuss, which is in its singular form. And in this sentence, there are a lot of people in the room. The subject people is in its plural form. And so the verb needs to be in its plural form as well. Also note that we use a singular verb with distance, periods of time, sums of money, etc. When considered as a unit. Have a look at the following examples. Ten dollars is a high price to pay for socks. Note that ten dollars in this sentence is considered as a unit. And in this sentence, ten dollars, in other words, dollar bills were scattered on the floor. Ten dollars is not considered as a unit. Also remember that collective nouns are words that imply more than one person but are considered singular and take a singular verb. For example, family, group, team, committee, class, etc. Have a look at the sentence over here. My family is very big. Note that the word family is a collective noun. It implies more than one person, but is considered singular. Now let's review and practice a bit. Remember that we use a plural verb when the subject of the sentence is composed of two or more nouns or pronouns connected by end. Read the following sentence and fill in the blank using the appropriate form of the verb. John and Carol to work together at the coffee shop. 
John and Carol work together at the coffee shop. Also note that the words each, each one, either, neither, everyone, everybody, anyone, anybody, nobody, somebody, someone, and no one are singular and require a singular verb. Now have a look at the following sentence. Fill in the blank using the appropriate form of the verb. No one to want to work 16 hours a day. No one wants to work 16 hours a day. Remember that when a compound subject contains both a singular and a plural noun or pronoun joined by or or nor, the verb should agree with the part of the subject that is closer to the verb, which is also known as the rule of proximity. Now have a look at the following sentences and fill in the blanks using the appropriate form of the verbs. My sister or my parents to give me a ride home. My sister or my parents give me a ride home. My parents or my sister to give me a ride home. My parents or my sister gives me a ride home. Note the subject verb agreement with words that indicate portions, for example, a lot, majority, some, all. If the noun after of is singular, use a singular verb. And if the noun after of is plural, make sure you use a plural verb. Now have a look at the following sentence and fill in the blank using the appropriate form of the verb. There to be a lot of people waiting in line. There are a lot of people waiting in line. Also note that collective nouns are words that imply more than one person but are considered singular. And take a singular verb. For example, family, group, team, committee, class, etc. Have a look at the sentence below and fill in the blank using the appropriate form of the verb. The team to lose a lot of games this year. The team has lost a lot of games this year. Here is a short story using the correct subject verb agreement. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. Now after I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. There are a lot of people outside. Do you know what's going on? These people are protesting. Maybe you've heard the recent news that some company wants to build a huge factory right over there? And surely no one is happy about that. But I didn't see any media around. I'm sure that some reporters will come in a bit. It's not like there are a couple of people, so it's difficult to ignore this. Now time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the correct word. A. The aim of the research was or were to find life of Mars. B. The group meet or meets every other week. C. My cousins and my brother don't or doesn't know how to cook. B. Nobody master or masters a language without making mistakes. 
E. Neither Sarah nor I am or are going to college this year. F. I, as well as my friends, am or are excited about the upcoming trip to Vegas. G. The jury has or have finally reached a decision. H. 10 kilometers is or are too far to walk. I. This or these jeans is or are too revealing. J. A car and a bike is or are my means of transportation. Now let's check your answers. The aim of the research was to find life of Mars. The group meets every other week. My cousins and my brother don't know how to cook. Nobody masters a language without making mistakes. Neither Sarah nor I am going to college this year. I, as well as my friends, am excited about the upcoming trip to Vegas. The jury has finally reached a decision. 10 kilometers is too far to walk. These jeans are too revealing. A car and a bike are my means of transportation. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hello, welcome to this tutorial. Today we are going to talk about the future simple tense. Let's get started. We can refer to the future by using will, be going to, or by using present tenses. Note that we use will when we want to talk generally about future beliefs, opinions, hopes, and predictions. Have a look at the example over here. I promise myself that once I start college, I will do all my assignments on time. Note that will in this sentence is used to talk about future hopes. Now let's have a look at the use of will plus verb, the negative will not or won't plus verb. Let's start with the positive sentence. Sam will probably move to Canada next year. Future prediction. Negative sentence would be, Sam won't move to Canada next year. He'll move to the US. In the question form, will Sam move to Canada next year? Another question, where will Sam move to? Let's have a look at time markers and probability markers. Time markers. Tomorrow, next month, in a day, etc. Probability markers. Perhaps, probably, definitely, etc. Have a look at the following examples. Perhaps, it'll snow tomorrow. I'll definitely finish my essay next month. Now make sure you pay attention to the word order. Positive sentence, we'll probably do it tomorrow. Negative, we probably won't do it tomorrow. Note that some speakers use shall to refer to the future 
informal situations with I and we. However, nowadays, shall is used for suggestions only. Have a look at the example over here. Shall I go or shall we leave together? In this sentence, shall is used for suggestion. Now let's review the future simple tense and practice a bit. Remember that we use will plus verb to make sentences in the future simple. Note that we form questions by inverting the subject and will, and the negative forms by using will not. Transform the following sentence into the future simple. They not to go to the bar tomorrow. They will not go to the bar tomorrow. What you to do next week? I don't know. I to meet up probably with some friends. What will you do next week? I don't know. I will probably meet up with some friends. Now try to practice using the contracted forms of will and will not, which is I'll and won't. Read the following sentence and practice. I to call you later, okay? I'll call you later, okay? I not to do anything without your advice. I won't do anything without your advice. Now read the following sentences and find the time or probability marker. He'll finish his book in a week or two. Week or two. You probably won't listen to me, but I'll try to explain it. Probably. Remember that nowadays we use shall for suggestions. Rewrite the following sentences using shall for suggestion. We to go is getting late. Shall we go? It's getting late. Here is a short story using the future simple tense. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Mike, what are your plans for tonight? I don't know really. Probably play some video games after work. And what will you do tomorrow? Well, I definitely won't go out with my friends tomorrow. And what will you do next week? I'll most certainly start learning another language. Mike, how do you have an answer for everything? It's quite simple. I don't plan anything. Things will happen on their own. Now it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and find time markers. A. Perhaps you'll make the right decision. Time will tell. B. Max will certainly come later tonight. C. Susan will try to go there next month, but it probably won't happen. Now read the following sentences and write the correct form. A. Why can't you come over? I. To let you sleep at my place. B. 
I not to do it unless you prove Jane wrong. C. We to try to make it work. We to let you know. D. We or to go to the restaurant tonight. I to pay for the meal. And now answer the following questions. A. What will you do tomorrow? B. Where will you stay during your summer vacation? C. Will robots take over the planet? Now let's check your answers. Perhaps you'll make the right decision. Time will tell. Max will certainly come later tonight. Susan will try to go there next month, but it probably won't happen. Why can't you come over? I'll let you sleep at my place. I won't do it unless you prove Jane wrong. We'll try to make it work. We'll let you know. Shall we go to the restaurant tonight? I'll pay for the meal. Sample answers. I'll probably stay at home and sleep the whole day. I'll stay at my friend's place. Robots won't take over the planet. I don't think that robots will take over the planet. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hello, welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about the gerund. Let's get started. The gerund looks exactly the same as the present participle, but the gerund always has the same function as a noun, although it looks like a verb. Note that the gerund is a noun made from a verb by adding ing. Have a look at the following example. Cooking at home can help you save a lot of money. Note that the word cooking has the same function as a noun, but it is made from the verb cook. Now when a verb ends with e, we get rid of e and add ing to the verb when we want to create the gerund. Have a look at the example over here. Make turns into making. Write, writing. And when a verb ends with a vowel plus a consonant, we double the consonant and add ing. For example, knit, knitting, swim, swimming. And when a verb ends with ie, we turn it into y, then add ing. As in the following example, lie, lying, die, dying. Remember that the gerund can be made negative by adding not. For example, in this sentence, we have the best thing for your health is not smoking. Note that the gerund can function as a. the subject of the sentence, for example, smoking causes lung cancer. The gerund Smoking is the subject of the sentence. B. The complement of the verb to be. For example, the hardest thing about learning Russian is memorizing the verbs of movements. Note that the gerund memorizing is the complement of the verb to be is. Also note that the gerund can be used a 
after prepositions or as part of expressions, such as there's no point in, in spite of, etc. Have a look at the following examples. Can your brother count to ten without looking at his finger? In this sentence, the gerund looking is used after the preposition without. And in this sentence, there's no point in going back to his place now. The gerund going is used after the expression there's no point in. B. The gerund can be used after phrasal verbs. They are composed of a verb plus preposition or adverb. For example, I ended up buying a new computer. Note that ended up is a phrasal verb, which is composed of a verb, ended, and up preposition. Have a look at the second example. Rachel gave up drinking sugar drinks. The gerund drinking comes after the phrasal verb, gave up, which is composed of a verb, gave, and up preposition. Now let's review the gerund and practice a bit. Remember that when a verb ends with E, we get rid of the E and add ing. And when a verb ends with a vowel plus a consonant, we double the consonant and add ing. And when a verb ends with ie, we turn it into y, then add ing. Now look at the words below and turn them into a gerund. Stop. Stopping. Dive. Diving. Fly. Flying. Cook. Cooking. Shop. Shopping. Fish. Fishing. Snarkle. Snarkling. Start. Starting. And remember that we use the gerund as the subject of the sentence. Rewrite the following sentence using the gerund. To eat sweets before breakfast is a bad habit. Eating sweets before breakfast is a bad habit. Also note that we can use the gerund as a complement of the verb to be. Rewrite the following sentences using the gerund. The first thing you need to do to overcome loneliness to get a hobby. The first thing you need to do to overcome loneliness is getting a hobby. Also remember that the gerund can be used after prepositions or as part of certain expressions. Look at the following sentence and rewrite it using the gerund. She ruined the party by to get drunk. She ruined the party by getting drunk. Also note that we use the gerund after phrasal verbs. Have a look at the following sentence and rewrite it using the gerund. My sister always, to put off, go to the doctor. My sister always puts off going to the doctor. Here is a short story using the gerund. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. 
After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Why don't we go to the beach this weekend? Hmm, I don't know. I'm really afraid of swimming in the ocean. But you can still play volleyball with us. I'm not good at volleyball. I keep on dropping the ball. You'll be our cheerleader then. Cheerleading is not something I like doing. If you make up your mind, give me a call. Now time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps using the correct word from the following list. Volunteering, parking, cooking, making. A is a great way to make friends. B. James surprised Helen by her a romantic dinner. C. Is not easy for someone who has five hours of driving experience. D. I keep on the same mistakes all over again. And now, correct the following sentences. A. He was sorry for to shout at his wife the day before. B. Are you interested in to go to concert with me? C. I am tired of to get your packages all the time. Now answer the following questions. A. Should people give up on their dreams? B. What are you good at? C. Is there anything that you can't live without? And now, let's check your answers. Volunteering is a great way to make friends. James surprised Helen by cooking her a romantic dinner. Parking is not easy for someone who has five hours of driving experience. I keep on making the same mistakes all over again. He was sorry for shouting at his wife the day before. Are you interested in going to concert with me? I am tired of getting your packages all the time. Sample answers. No, people shouldn't be giving up on their dreams. I am not good at making people laugh. I can't live without traveling. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the helping verb to be. Let's get started. Now we use auxiliary verbs, which are also known as helping verbs, to form questions, negative sentences, compound sentences, the perfect tense or the continuous tense, and the passive voice. Note that the basic auxiliary verbs are to be, to do, and to have. Note that the helping verb to be can be used as an auxiliary and a main verb. Have a look at the following examples. My sister is kind. Now in this sentence, the verb is is the main verb. And in this sentence, 
My sister is cooking dinner. The verb is is an auxiliary verb that helps to build the present continuous tense. Cooking dinner. Remember that the verb to be is irregular. Have a look at the table below. Now the base form of the verb to be is be. The present form, am, is, or are. Past form, was, or were. Present participle or gerund, being. Past participle, been. Now you can use the auxiliary verb to be A. When you don't want to repeat something. For example, everyone was working that day, but I wasn't. Meaning, I wasn't working. B. To deny something or say that it's not true. For example, you're being unreasonable. No, I'm not. Meaning, I'm not being unreasonable. C. To show interest in what somebody has said or to show surprise. For example, Kelly and Peter are dating. Are they? Really? Showing surprise. D. With so when you agree and neither or nor when you disagree. For example, I'm sleepy. So am I. I agree. I'm sleepy too. My parents are never late. Neither are mine. Meaning that my parents are never late either. Now let's review the helping verb to be and practice a bit. Remember that we can use the helping verb to be as an auxiliary or a main verb. Now read the following sentences and decide whether the verbs are being used as an auxiliary or the main verb of the sentence. His grandfather was a brave man. Main verb. The students were working on a group project. Auxiliary verb. Also, remember that we use the auxiliary verb to be when you don't want to repeat something. Read the following sentence and fill in the blank using the appropriate form of the helping verb. Anna's husband was happy about the upcoming job opportunity, but she, she wanted to stay in LA. Anna's husband was happy about the upcoming job opportunity, but she wasn't. She wanted to stay in L.A. Also, remember that we use the auxiliary verb to be to deny something or say that something is not true. Read the following sentence and fill in the blank using the appropriate form of the helping verb to be. The party was a disaster. No, it, it was a blast. No, it wasn't. It was a blast. Note that the auxiliary verb to be can also be used to show interest in what somebody has said or to show surprise. Read the following sentence and fill in the blank using the appropriate form of the helping verb to be. Don't you know that Samantha is moving abroad? Are you sure? Is she? Are you sure? Remember that we use the auxiliary verb to be with so when you agree and neither or nor when you disagree. And note 
that the auxiliary verb goes before the subject. Practice responding to the following sentences using the appropriate form of the helping verb to be. Jack is feeling uplifted. So is she. I'm not happy about the news. Neither am I. Here is a short story using the helping verb to be. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Max and Anne are getting married next month. Are they? Really? I'm quite surprised. So am I. It all happened so fast. They have known each other for such a short time. It's crazy, isn't it? Yes, it is. And are they inviting everyone to their wedding? No, they aren't. I think that they are planning on having a small wedding. Are they? Well, maybe it's for the better. I'm not a fan of big weddings. Nor am I. Now time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and decide whether the underlined verb to be is an auxiliary or a main verb in the sentence. A. I've never been to Paris. B. My friends were enjoying the hike, but I wasn't. C. I'm trying to concentrate. Don't bother me with your questions. D. Jenny was extremely upset after getting her exam results. Read the following sentences and give short answers using the auxiliary verb to be. A. I wasn't upset to find out that our classes were cancelled. B. Rachel's Thanksgiving trifle with bananas and beef was a disaster. C. Do you know that Liz is going to participate in a beauty pageant? D. Are you trying to say that I'm wrong? E. We are happy to be here with you today. F. I'm not very interested in joining the club. Now let's check your answers. A. I've been to Paris. Main verb. My friends were enjoying the hike, but I wasn't. Auxiliary verb. I'm trying to concentrate. Don't bother me with your questions. Auxiliary verb. Jenny was extremely upset after getting her exam results. Main verb. Sample answers. Neither was I, nor was I. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Joey liked it. Is she? Really? Yes, I am. No, I'm not. So am I. Neither am I, nor am I. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the helping verbs to do and to have. Let's get started. Remember 
that we use auxiliary verbs, which are also known as helping verbs, to form questions, negative sentences, compound tenses, the perfect tense or the continuous tense, and the passive voice. Also note that the basic auxiliary verbs are to be, to do, and to have. Now the verbs to do and to have can be used as auxiliary and main verbs. Let's have a look at the examples below. My sister does her own taxes. Now in this sentence, the verb does is used as the main verb. And in this sentence, do you believe in ghosts? The verb do is used as an auxiliary verb to form a question. And in this sentence, Anne has a well-paying job. The verb has is used as the main verb. Anne has got a well-paying job. Has got auxiliary verb. Remember that the verbs to do and to have are irregular. Have a look at the following table. The base form of the verb do is do, have, have. The present form do or does, have or has. Past form did, had. Present participle or gerund doing, having. Past participle, done, had. Note that we can use the auxiliary verbs to do and to have a when you don't want to repeat something. For example, everyone likes going to the movies, but I don't. Meaning that I don't like going to the movies. b to deny something or say that it's not true. For example, have you ever been abroad? No, I haven't. Meaning that I haven't been abroad. C. To show interest in what somebody has said or to show surprise. Have a look at the example below. They have been married for 50 years. Have they? That's unbelievable. Surprise. D. With so when you agree and neither or nor when you disagree. Now in this case, an auxiliary verb goes before the subject. Have a look at the following examples. She has helped me a lot. So have I meaning that I have helped you too. I don't want to go to work, neither do I, meaning I don't want to go to work either. Now let's review the helping verbs to do and to have and practice a bit. Remember that we use to do and to have as the auxiliary or main verbs of a sentence. Read the following sentences and decide whether the helping verb is the auxiliary or main verb of the sentence. Kim does her homework at night. Main verb. Do they know about this? Auxiliary verb. My grandma has a bad memory. Main verb. Lucy has forgotten to buy milk. Auxiliary verb. Also note that we use the auxiliary verbs to do and to have when you don't want to repeat something. Read the following sentence and fill in the blanks using the appropriate form of the helping verbs. Kate
called in sick, and I. She had called in sick two times already, and I. Kate called in sick, and I didn't. She had called in sick two times already, and I hadn't. Remember that we use the auxiliary verbs to do and to have to deny something or say that something is not true. Read the following sentences and fill in the blanks using the appropriate form of the helping verbs. Do you remember calling me? No, I. Do you remember calling me? No, I don't. Has he been playing tennis for ten years? No, he. He has just started. Has he been playing tennis for ten years? No, he hasn't. He has just started. Remember. That we also use the auxiliary verbs to do and to have to show interest in what somebody has said, or to show surprise. Read the following sentences and fill in the blanks using the appropriate form of the helping verbs. They don't know how to cook. How is it possible? They don't know how to cook, do they? How is it possible? She had tried it many times before. I've never heard about it. Had she? I've never heard about it. Remember that we use the auxiliary verbs to do and to have with so, when you agree, and neither or nor. When you disagree, read the following sentences and provide a response using the appropriate form of the helping verbs. Emma wants to go out with Daniel. So does Ellen. I've never been to England. Neither have I. Here is a short story using the appropriate forms of the helping verbs to do and to have. Listen as I read, so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself, so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Have you heard anything from Sam? No, I I haven't. I've tried calling him, but he doesn't pick up the phone. So have I. Well, maybe he's busy with something right now. Actually, I think that Anna has told me something about Sam trying to find a new job, so he might be stressed out now. Does she even know him that well? Yes, she does. They met at my birthday party last year, and they have become friends at once. Have they? I've never seen them hanging out together. Anyway, I hope that he's doing all right. And now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and decide whether the underlined verbs to do and to have are auxiliary or main verbs in the sentence. A. I've never been to Finland. B. She has a big collection of shoes. C. I can't believe they have forgotten about our birthday. D. Peter hasn't got any motivation lately. Now read the following sentences and give short answers using the auxiliary verbs to do and to have. A. 
I don't think they will win this game. B. My friend has never spent Christmas together with his family. C. Kate likes shopping at weekends. D. Have you heard the latest news? E. I've never seen anything like that. F. Do you believe in fate? Now let's check your answers. I've never been to Finland. Auxiliary verb. She has a big collection of shoes. Main verb. I can't believe they have forgotten about your birthday. Auxiliary verb. Peter hasn't got any motivation lately. Auxiliary verb. Sample answers. Neither do I, nor do I. Has he? So do I. Yes, I have. No, I haven't. Neither have I, nor have I. Yes, I do. No, I don't. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about model verbs, can and could. Let's get started. We use model verbs to show if we believe something is certain, probable, or possible or not. Remember that we also use models to ask permission, make requests and offers, etc. Remember that model verbs fall into the category of auxiliary verbs, which are also known as helping verbs, meaning that they are used together with a main verb to give grammatical information and additional meaning to a sentence. Now the model verb can has only two forms, can in the present and could in the past. Now we use can, A, to talk about general abilities or skills in the present. For example, I can cook and bake. General ability or skill. B, to make general statements about what is possible or impossible, not allowed. For example, it can be very hot in summer. General statement about what is possible in summer. You can't smoke here. Impossible. Not allowed to smoke here. C. To ask for permission. Informal. For example, can I borrow your pencil, please? D. To request something. Informal. Can you help me, please? E. To make offers. For example, can I carry these bags for you? And could is used A. To talk about general abilities or skills in the past. For example, I could paint beautifully as a kid. In the past. B. To make general statements about what was possible or impossible, not allowed. For example, it could be very hot in summer. General statement about what was possible. He couldn't do it. He is such a sweet guy. It was impossible for him to do it. C. To ask for permission. Formal. Can I use your phone, please? D. To request something. 
formal. For example, could you show me the way, please? E. To make suggestions. For example, we could go to the bar if you want. Now let's review the model verbs can and could and practice a bit. Remember that we use can or could to talk about general abilities or skills in the present or in the past. Read the following sentences and fill in the blanks using the appropriate model verbs. My mother sing and play the piano at the same time. My mother can sing and play the piano at the same time. When we were younger, we make friends in one second. When we were younger, we could make friends in one second. Also note that we use can or could to make general statements about what is or was possible or impossible. Read the following sentences and fill in the blanks using the appropriate forms of the model verbs. You litter in the streets. You can't litter in the streets. I call him due to the poor cell phone reception. I couldn't call him due to the poor cell phone reception. Remember that we use can or could to ask for permission, request something, or make offers or suggestions in an informal or formal way. Read the following sentences and fill in the blanks using the appropriate forms of the model verbs. I go outside to play with friends? Can I go outside to play with friends? You spell your name, please? Could you spell your name, please? I help you with anything. Can I help you with anything? We go to the park if the weather is nice. We could go to the park if the weather is nice. Here is a short story using model verbs. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Jamie, could you help me please? Yeah, of course. Could you be the one to cook dinner today? Well, I can cook, but I'm not the best at it. Are you sure you want me to help? Yes, I am sure you can do it. You can simply follow the recipe. I'll leave the cooking book on the table. That I can do. You can count on me. And now it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with can or can't or could or couldn't. A. Liz loves her brother to death, but she understand why he behaves like that sometimes. B. My grandmother traveled a lot. She speak four languages. C. I eat four brownies in one minute. D. I looked everywhere for the book, but I find it.
Read the following sentences and react to the situation using the appropriate form of the model verbs. A. Your friend is struggling with his project. Offer your help. B. You are having a family dinner. Ask your aunt's husband, William, to pass the salt. C. You are eight years old and you want to go to your friend's place. Ask your mom's permission. And now, answer the following questions using the appropriate form of the model verbs. A. Can you play any musical instrument? B. Could you become a superhero? C. Can you learn 20 new English words a day? Now, let's check your answers. Liz loves her brother to death, but she can't understand why he behaves like that sometimes. My grandmother traveled a lot. She could speak four languages. I can't eat four brownies in one minute. I looked everywhere for the book, but I couldn't find it. I can help you with your project. William, could you pass the salt, please? Mom, can I go to my friend's place, please? Sample answers. Yes, I can play the guitar. No, I couldn't become a superhero because I am too anxious. Yes, I can learn 20 new English words a day. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hello, welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about adjectives and adverbs. Let's get started. An adjective is a word or set of words that modifies, in other words, describes a noun or pronoun. Remember that adjectives may come before or after the word they modify. Now let's have a look at the examples over here. This is a cute cat. Now the adjective cute modifies or describes the noun cat. And note that it comes before the noun. And in the sentence, this cat is cute. Again, the adjective cute modifies the noun cat, but it comes after the noun. On the other hand, an adverb is a word or set of words that modifies verbs, adjectives, or other adverbs. Remember the usually Adverbs modify verbs, and they tell us how, how often, when, or where something was done. Let's have a look at the example over here. We walked really slowly. Now the adverb slowly modifies the verb walked. How we walked. Remember that adjectives can modify nouns, for example, girl, boy, etc. Or pronouns, for example, we, it, etc. Now let's have a look at the examples below. Lily is an honest person. Note that the adjective honest modifies or describes the noun person. 
And in this sentence, the movie was awful. The plot is simply boring. The adjective awful modifies or describes what kind of movie it was. And the adjective boring describes the plot. Remember that if something is, the adjective ends in ing. And if it makes you feel something, the adjective ends in ed. Let's have a look at the examples below. He is excited because the event is exciting. Note that the adjective excited modifies the pronoun he and it tells us how or what the event made him feel. And the adjective exciting describes what the event is. And in this sentence, I am annoyed because the whole situation is annoying. Note that the adjective annoyed describes what I felt about the whole situation. And the adjective annoying describes what the whole situation is. Now, sometimes we use two or more adjectives together. Let's have a look at the table below. A nice sunny morning. Now, there are two adjectives describing the noun morning. The adjective nice describes quality or opinion. And the adjective sunny is a fact. And in this sentence, two intelligent young ladies. There are three adjectives modifying the noun ladies. The adjective two is the quantity or the number of ladies. And the adjective intelligent describes the quality or opinion about the ladies. And the adjective young is a fact. And in this sentence, a beautiful large round wooden table, there are sets of adjectives describing the noun table. Beautiful, the quality or opinion. Large round wooden is the fact. Now there are times when we use two or more fact adjectives. Let's have a look at the table below. A big old round wooden table. Now in this sentence, we used several fact adjectives. Big describes the size of the table. Old, the age of the table. Round, shape of the table. Wooden, material or origin of the table. And in this sentence, new white tennis shoes. There are three fact adjectives used to describe the noun shoes. New describes the age, white, the color, and tennis, the purpose. And in this sentence, a tall, young Polish boy. The adjective tall describes the size of the boy. Young, the age of the boy. Polish, the origin of the boy. On the other hand, an adverb is a word or set of words that modifies a verbs telling us how, how often, when, or where something was done. For example, the cars drove fast. The adverb fast describes how the cars drove. B, an adverb, is also used to modify adjectives making them stronger or weaker. Have a look at the example below. Anne looked absolutely amazing. 
The adverb absolutely modifies or describes the adjective amazing. How amazing? C. An adverb is used to modify other adverbs, changing their degree or precision. For example, you're speaking too loudly. The adverb too describes the adverb loudly. It tells us how loud. Degree. Now let's review the use of adjectives and adverbs and practice a bit. Remember that when forming an adjective, if something is, the adjective ends in ing. And if it makes you feel something, the adjective ends in ed. Read the following sentence and fill in the blanks using the appropriate form of the following adjective. Tiredness. This work is so, it makes me really. This work is so tiring. It makes me feel tired. Remember the quantity or number and quality or opinion adjectives go before fact adjectives. Read the following sentences and arrange the adjectives in their appropriate places. Gorgeous three models were in the ad on TV. Three gorgeous models were in the ad on TV. We asked them to get wooden, comfy six chairs. We asked them to get six comfy wooden chairs. Note the order of fact adjectives, size, age, shape, color, material or origin, and purpose. Read the following sentences and arrange the adjectives in their appropriate places. Tim needs black new leather shoes. Tim needs new black leather shoes. I'd like to buy an wooden round white antique table. I'd like to buy an antique round white wooden table. And remember that we use adverbs to modify verbs, indicating how, how often, when, or where something was done. Read the following sentence and underline these adverbs. I try to go quickly to coffee shops every month. Quickly. Also note that we use adverbs to modify adjectives, making them stronger or weaker. We also use adverbs to modify other adverbs, changing their degree or precision. Read the following sentences and underline the adverbs that modify adjectives or other adverbs. This game was insanely popular in the 90s. Insanely. The band plays extremely well. Extremely. Here is a short story using adjectives and adverbs. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, 
make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. How are you doing? I'm really tired. We've got a very important project to work on. It must be tiring. Is it going well though? Yes, very well. Our department is quite big, so one could imagine that there would be problems with task management. But I must say that my co-workers are extremely professional and responsible. Everything is going to be great. The amount of dedication you have is amazing. Now time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and decide whether an adjective or an adverb should be used. A. Your house is very close or closely to ours. B. She moved quick or quickly around the shop. C. Listen careful or carefully. I won't repeat it again. D. It is not as bad or badly as it sounds. Now read the following sentences and put the adjectives into the correct order. A. Our apartment is and modern spacious. B. I want to hear reasons why you don't want to go with us. Good. Two. C. Marion has dogs, black and white, lovely too. Answer the following questions. A. How often do you go to the movies? B. Are you close to your family? C. What is something that you can do extremely well? Now let's check your answers. Your house is very close to ours. She moved quickly around the shop. Listen carefully. I won't repeat it again. It is not as bad as it sounds. Our apartment is modern and spacious. I want to hear two good reasons why you don't want to go with us. Marion has two lovely black and white dogs. Sample answers. I go to the movies quite often. Yes, I'm very close to my family. I can play the guitar extremely well. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about descriptive adjectives. Let's get started. Remember that an adjective is a word or set of words that modifies, in other words, describes a noun or pronouns. Note that adjectives may come before or after the word they modify, as in the example over here. This is a cute cat. The adjective cute describes the noun 
cat and it comes before the noun and in this sentence this cat is cute again the adjective cute modifies or describes the noun cat but it comes after the noun note that descriptive adjectives describe nouns or pronouns in detail by giving an attribute to that particular word remember that they usually express things through the five senses touch taste sight smell and sound have a look at the example over here this is a delicious sandwich now the adjective delicious modifies or describes the taste of the sandwich note that descriptive adjectives can be organized into the following categories a simple adjectives are the most basic type of descriptive adjectives have a look at the example below it was a beautiful day yesterday clear sky sweet smell of blossoming trees green grass cheerful people it seemed as if the world had united to celebrate the coming of spring note that the adjective beautiful describes the day clear describes the sky sweet the smell of blossoming trees green color of the grass cheerful feeling of the people b compound adjectives are created when two words are combined to create a descriptive adjective now the two words are typically connected with a hyphen as in the example below pam was a baby-faced long-legged girl baby-faced and long-legged are adjectives that describe the girl and they are connected with a hyphen now let's review the use of descriptive adjectives and practice a bit remember that we use descriptive adjectives to describe nouns or pronouns in detail by giving them an attribute to that particular word read the following sentence and underline these adjectives we bought a spacious apartment in a quiet part of our town spacious quiet note that descriptive adjectives usually express things through the five senses touch taste sight smell and sound read the following sentence and underline these adjectives the food smelled awful it tasted horrible and it did not look tasty awful horrible tasty remember that we express such aspects as feelings time sound quantity taste appearance size age color shape and material through simple adjectives read the following sentence and underline these adjectives i wanted to buy three white wooden chairs three white wooden also note that we form compound descriptive adjectives by combining two words usually with a hyphen read the following sentence and underline these adjectives and is an example of a girl next door she's sweet kind and has a lot in common with boys next door make sure
sure to always pay attention to the order of adjectives in a sentence. Read the following sentences and arrange the adjectives in their proper places. When we were kids, my friend was a funny-looking short boy, and he grew up to be a tall, young, drop-dead gorgeous man. When we were kids, my friend was a funny-looking short boy, and he grew up to be a drop-dead, gorgeous, tall, young man. Here is a short story using descriptive adjectives. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real-life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. I've heard that you are going to move abroad next month. Yes, that's true. We are going to sunny Spain. I think I know the reason behind this. After living here in ice-cold Finland, you want something less depressing, weather-wise. Yeah, exactly. We want to explore the narrow streets of Madrid, dine at small family restaurants, enjoy magnificent sunsets. You're going to love it there then. And now, it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the descriptive adjectives. A. I saw a lovely, young, good, intelligent, fascinating woman, such as I had never met before. B. To understand the mystery of this uninteresting, good, simple-hearted man who argued with such wearisome good sense. C. And he kept near the more solid people, looking listless and superfluous, with a submissive, uninterested expression as though he had never been brought there for sale. Read the following sentences and form compound descriptive adjectives. A. If someone resembles a bird, he is... B. If someone broke your heart, you are? C. If you use your left hand to do everything, you are? Now read the following sentences and put the adjectives into the correct order. A. Jim drew a picture of dragons, three-headed two. B. Jack bought a or an ring, diamond, expensive engagement. C. She was a lady, self-centered young. Now, let's check your answers. I saw a lovely, young, good, intelligent, fascinating woman such as I had never met before. To understand the mystery of this uninteresting, good, simple-hearted man who argued with such wearisome good sense. And he kept near the more solid people, looking listless and superfluous, with a submissive, uninterested expression, as though he had never been brought there for sale. 
if someone resembles a bird, he is bird-like. If someone broke your heart, you are broken-hearted. If you use your left hand to do everything, you are left-handed. Jim drew a picture of two three-headed dragons. Jack bought an expensive diamond engagement ring. She was a self-centered young lady. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about proper adjectives. Let's get started. Remember that an adjective is a word or set of words that modifies and other words describes a noun or pronoun. Note that adjectives may come before or after the word they modify, as in the example over here. This is a cute cat. The adjective cute modifies or describes the noun cat, and it comes before the noun. And in the sentence, this cat is cute. The adjective cute describes the noun cat, but note that it comes after the noun. Now proper adjectives are formed from proper nouns and modify nouns and pronouns. Have a look at the example below. I love Italian culture. The word Italian is a proper adjective and it's formed from the proper noun Italy. Remember that a proper noun is the specific name used for any person, place, or thing, as in Italy. Also note that proper adjectives typically look like their original proper nouns, but have some sort of alternative ending. Have a look at the examples below. He lives in America. America is a proper noun. It is the name of the country. And in this sentence, he likes American holiday. American is a proper adjective but it's formed from the proper noun America. Only the ending is different. Note that proper adjectives are derived from proper nouns, and so they are capitalized. Have a look at the example below. When she lived in China, Liz ate a lot of Chinese food. Note that the proper adjective Chinese is capitalized and it's derived from the proper noun China. And when a proper adjective has a prefix, the prefix itself is never capitalized. However, the proper adjective itself is still capitalized. Have a look at the example below. In pre-Columbian America, corn was the only cultivated cereal. Note that the prefix pre is not capitalized, but the proper adjective Colombian is capitalized. Let's have a look at the table below. Now proper adjectives that are derived from proper nouns and end in I-A-N, E-A-N, or A-N are as follow. Italian, derived from Italy. Korean, Korea. Moroccan, Morocco. And proper adjectives that end in I-C. Icelandic, Nordic, Hispanic. ESE, Chinese, Japanese, Portuguese. I, 
Iraqi is really Pakistani. Iset Danish Finnish Irish Now let's review the use of proper adjectives and practice a bit. Remember that we use proper adjectives to modify nouns and pronouns. Read the following sentence and fill in the blanks using the appropriate proper adjective. I have a lot of China and Korea friends. I have a lot of Chinese and Korean friends. Note that proper adjectives are derived from proper nouns, and so they typically look like their original proper nouns, but have some sort of alternative ending. Read the following sentence and fill in the blank using the appropriate proper adjective. Peter is fond of Scotland. Scotland is a proper noun. He has been to many cities. He has been to many Scottish cities. Remember that proper adjectives are capitalized as they are derived from proper nouns. Have a look at the following sentence and fill in the blank using the appropriate proper adjective. The drama club performed the Shakespeare play. Shakespearean play. Also, remember that when a proper adjective has a prefix, the prefix itself is never capitalized. Read the following sentence and fill in the blank using the appropriate proper adjective. There was a steep rise in anti-Semitic incidents worldwide at that time. There was a steep rise in anti-Semitic incidents worldwide at that time. Note that we use the most common endings for nationalities, such as IAN, EAN, AN, IC, ESC, I, ISH to form proper adjectives. Read the following proper nouns and provide the appropriate proper adjective. Russia, Russian, Poland, Polish, Iceland, Icelandic, Saudi Arabia, Saudi, Lebanon, Lebanese, Turkey, Turkish, Ukraine, Ukrainian, Vietnam, Vietnamese, United Arab Emirates, Emirati, Spain, Hispanic. Here is a short story using proper adjectives. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Do you know that Kelly works at a Mexican restaurant? Yeah, but I know that she doesn't like Mexican food. That's true, but we don't have any European or Asian restaurants here. Actually, I heard that some French place is going to open in a month or two. Really? I think she would love to work there. Her cooking skills are excellent. And now it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and decide whether the adjectives should be capitalized. A. She's been reading Buddhist teachings. B. Paint 
thinking originated in prehistoric times. C. An anti-theft backpack holds just about anything you need while keeping it all safe with enhanced safety features. D. He was described as a real renaissance man. Read the following sentences and provide the proper adjective form of the words in the bracket. A. France. Toasters may be eaten as a dessert in France. B. Billy likes reading Greece myth. C. Have you ever tried traditional Ireland stew? D. The band plays Christ music. E. I'd like to try Belgium waffles. F. The Edward era of British history covers the brief reign of King Edward VII. And now, let's check your answers. She's been reading Buddhist teachings. Painting originated in prehistoric times. An anti-theft backpack holds just about anything you need while keeping it all safe with enhanced safety features. He was described as a real renaissance man. French toast may be eaten as a dessert in France. Billy likes reading Greek myths. Have you ever tried traditional Irish stew? The band plays Christian music. I'd like to try Belgian waffles. The Edwardian era of British history covers the brief reign of King Edward VII. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about possessive adjectives. Let's get started. Remember that an adjective is a word or set of words that modifies, in other words, describes a noun or pronoun. Note that adjectives may come before or after the word they modify. As in the example, over here. This is a cute cat. The adjective cute modifies or describes the noun cat and it comes before the noun. And in the sentence, this cat is cute. The adjective cute again modifies or describes the noun cat, but it comes after the noun. Now, limiting adjectives help to define or limit a noun or pronoun by telling which one, what kind, or how many. Have a look at the example below. This sandwich is delicious. This is a limiting adjective, and it tells us which sandwich is delicious. Now, in this category, there are possessive adjectives, and they modify the noun following it in order to show possession. These adjectives are my, your, his, her, its, our, and their. Have a look at the example below. 
I told my friend that I like someone. Then she told that to her friend, and that friend told that to his friend, and now everyone knows everything. Note that the possessive adjective my modifies the noun friend, and it comes before the noun it modifies. And the possessive adjective her modifies the noun following it, which is friend. And his modifies the noun friends. Now let's have a look at the table below. In the first person, singular, the subject is I. Object, me. The possessive adjective is my, as in my cat. Possessive pronoun, mine. In the second person singular, you. Subject, object, you. Possessive adjective, your, your cat. Possessive pronoun, yours. Third person singular, subject, he, she, or it. Object, him, her, or it. Possessive adjective, his, his cat, her, her cat, its, its cat. The possessive pronoun, his, hers, its. First person, plural. Subject, we. Object, us. Possessive adjective, our, our cat. Possessive pronoun, ours. Second person, plural. Subject, they. Object, them. Possessive adjective, their, their cat. Possessive pronoun, theirs. Third person plural. Subject, you. Object, you. Possessive adjective, your, your cat. Possessive pronoun, yours. Note that the possessive adjectives need to agree with the possessor and not with the thing that is possessed. However, the verb that is used needs to be in agreement with the noun. Have a look at the examples below. She has a boyfriend. Her boyfriend is very kind. Note that the possessive adjective her is in agreement with what is possessed, which is boyfriend. And the noun boyfriend is in agreement with the verb is. And in this sentence, Peter likes to cook. His cooking skills are great. Note that the possessive adjective his is in agreement with what is possessed, which is skills. And the noun skills is in agreement with the verb are. Remember that possessive adjectives are often confused with possessive pronouns. Have a look at the examples below. Your car is black. Your in this sentence is an adjective which modifies the word car. And in this sentence, mine is white. Mine is a pronoun which functions as the subject of the sentence. Also, remember not to confuse its and its with an apostrophe. Its is the possessive adjective for it, and it is a contraction of it is. Have a look at the examples below. It is a beautiful day. 
It's a beautiful day. Both sentences are the same. They have the same meaning. Only difference? It's is the contraction of it is. But in the sentence, the dog was wriggling its tail. It's is the possessive adjective for it's and it modifies the dog's tail. Also remember not to confuse there and there. There is the possessive adjective for they and there is a contraction of they are. It's in the example over here. They are best friends. Same thing as their best friends. But in the sentence, I want to see their performance. There is the possessive adjective for they and it modifies the noun following it. Performance. Now let's review the use of possessive adjectives and practice a bit. Remember that we use possessive adjectives my, your, his, her, its, our, and their to modify the noun following it in order to show possession. Read the following sentence and fill in the blank using the appropriate possessive adjective. We family is very energetic. Our family is very energetic. Note the depossessive adjective needs to agree with the possessor and not with the thing that is possessed. Read the following sentence and fill in the blanks using the appropriate possessive adjective. She father is a writer. Writing skills are truly amazing. Her father is a writer. Her writing skills are truly amazing. Remember not to confuse possessive adjectives with possessive pronouns. Read the following sentences and decide whether the words in bold are possessive adjectives or possessive pronouns. Their house is huge. There is an adjective which modifies the word house. Hers is small. Hers is a pronoun which functions as the subject of the sentence. Also, remember not to confuse its and its with an apostrophe. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps using the appropriate possessive adjective. Such a cute cat. Look at tiny poles. It's such a cute cat. Look at its tiny poles. Also, do not confuse there and there. Read the following sentence and fill in the gap with either there or there. Going on vacation. Flight has been booked a long time ago. They're going on a vacation. Their flight has been booked a long time ago. Here is a short story using possessive adjectives. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand 
all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Hey, have you seen my phone anywhere? No, I haven't seen it. Maybe you should check your backpack. When I lose my phone, it's usually there. I can't seem to find it though. Could you call me? Yeah, sure. I think I have your number. I don't want to use our company phone for personal matters, and I really hope that I haven't lost my phone somewhere. Now it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with my, your, his, her, its, our, or their. A. Peter is from the UK. Wife is from the US. B. These students didn't do homework. C. Look at the kitten. Look at tiny paws. D. Mary loves grandfather a lot. She visits him every week. E. Pam and Kate go to high school. Little brother goes to nursery school. F. We go to the same school. School is amazing. G. I don't like haircut. I think it doesn't suit me. Now read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with it's, it's, there, there. A. Such a nice day. Maybe we could go to the beach. B. Parents are very strict. They never let them go out with us late at night. C. Sorry, but I can't believe it. So kind to everyone. Now, let's check your answers. Peter is from the UK. His wife is from the US. These students didn't do their homework. Look at that kitten. Look at its tiny paws. Mary loves her grandfather a lot. She visits him every week. Pam and Kate go to high school. Their little brother goes to nursery school. We go to the same school. Our school is amazing. I don't like my haircut. I think it doesn't suit me. It's such a nice day. Maybe we could go to the beach. Their parents are very strict. They never let them go out with us late at night. Sorry, but I can't believe it. They're so kind to everyone. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about forming adverbs. Let's get started. An adverb is a word or set of words that modifies verbs, adjectives, or other adverbs. Note that they usually modify verbs, telling us how, how often, when, or where something was done. Have a look at the example over here. We walked really slowly. 
the adverb slowly modifies the verb walked, telling us how we walked. Remember the reform adverbs by adding ly to an adjective. For example, slow, slowly. And when adjectives end in l, we keep the l and add ly. For example, careful, carefully. And when adjectives end in y, we change the y to i and then add ly. For example, easy, easily. And when adjectives end in able, ible, or le, we replace the e with y. For example, probable, probably. Terrible, terribly. Gentle, gently. And when adjectives end in ic, we add ally at the end. For example, economic, economically. Note that sometimes adjectives end in ly, as in friendly, lively. And when this happens, we cannot change it into an adverb by adding ly. And so it's better to use, as in, for example, in a friendly way or manner. Have a look at the example below. He talked to me in a friendly manner. Note that the following adverbs have the same form as the adjective early, fast, hard, high, late, near, straight, or wrong. Have a look at the following examples. The train is very fast. Fast in this sentence is an adjective. It modifies the noun train. And in this sentence, the train goes fast. Fast is an adverb because it modifies the verb goes. Now the adverb well corresponds to the adjective good. Have a look at the example below. Tom is a good student. He studies well. Good in the sentence modifies the noun student, and so it is an adjective. Well, on the other hand, is an adverb that modifies the verb studies. And the adverb hardly is now related to the meaning of hard. The adverb hardly has the meaning almost not. Have a look at the example below. Hardly anyone writes to me these days. Meaning almost no one writes to me these days. And in the sentence, Susan ate hardly anything means Susan ate almost nothing. And now, let's review forming adverbs and practice a bit. Remember that we form adverbs by adding ly to an adjective. And when adjectives end in l, we add ly. When adjectives end in y, we change the y to i, then add ly. And when adjectives end in able, I, B, L, E, L, E, we replace the E with Y. And when adjectives end in I, C, we simply add A, L, L, Y. Now read the following adjectives and change them to adverbs. Quick, quickly, simple, simply, angry, angrily, faithful, faithfully, happy, happily.
calm, calmly, comfortable, comfortably, romantic, romantically, beautiful, beautifully, incredible, incredibly. Remember that adjectives ending in ly, such as friendly or lively, can't be made into adverbs by adding ly. Instead, we use it as such, in a friendly way or manner. Provide the correct form of the following sentence. Julian was speaking friendly. Julian was speaking in a friendly way or manner. Also note that the following adverbs have the same form as the adjectives early, fast, hard, high, late, near, straight, and wrong. Read the following sentences and decide whether the words in bold are used as adjectives or adverbs. Peter is a late bloomer. Late in the sentence is used as an adjective. The train arrived late. Late in the sentence is used as an adverb. Note that the adverb hardly is not related to the meaning of hard. The adverb hardly has the meaning almost not. Read the following sentence and provide a similar sentence using the word hardly. There was very little traffic. There was hardly any traffic. Here is a short story forming adverbs. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. I miss Anna terribly. We hardly ever see her. I understand you completely. I haven't seen her for ages. At least she often calls us. Yeah, she doesn't forget calling us regularly. Especially with her job. She works very hard. She told me yesterday that she had to work overtime. She must be so tired. I'll try to persuade her to take a vacation and come here. She definitely needs to rest to work productively. And now, it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with the adverbs from the box. Hard, happily, hardly, well, successfully. A. Alan dances very and never steps on people's feet. B. I can believe it. C. And they lived ever after. D. We completed the course. E. Susan worked very and was promoted in February. And now, rewrite each sentence so that it has a similar meaning and contains the adverb in brackets. A. Sam didn't sleep well. Badly. B. 
Jane lives abroad, so her friends almost never see her. Hardly ever. C. Lucy's parents are slow walkers. Slowly. D. The couple lived together and were happy. Happily. E. Philip is ill. Well. Now, let's check your answers. Alan dances very well and never steps on people's feet. I can hardly believe it. And they lived happily ever after. We completed the course successfully. Susan worked very hard and was promoted in February. Sam slept badly. Jane lives abroad so her friends hardly ever see her. Lucy's parents walk slowly. The couple lived happily together. Philip isn't feeling well. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about adverbs of manner. Let's get started. Remember that an adverb is a word or set of words that modifies verbs, adjectives, or other adverbs. Note that they usually modify verbs, telling us how, how often, when, or where something was done. It's in the example over here. We walked really slowly. The adverb slowly modifies the verb walked and it tells us how we walked. Now an adverb of manner tells us how something happens. Have a look at the example below. I carefully read the note left on the counter. Now the adverb of manner carefully modifies the verb read and it tells us how we read. Also note that adverbs of manner are usually placed either before the main verb or after the object. Have a look at the examples below. Tom quickly left the building. Now the adverb of manner quickly modifies the main verb left and it comes before it. And in this sentence, Tom left the building quickly. Again, the adverb of manner quickly modifies the main verb left, but it comes after the object, building. Note that such adverbs as well, badly, hard, fast are always placed after the verb. Have a look at the examples below. Alice, hard work. This sentence is incorrect because the adverb is placed before the verb. The correct form would be Alice worked hard. And when there is more than one verb in a clause, the position of the adverb is very important. Let's have a look at the examples below. Samuel slowly decided to leave the party. Now, in this sentence, the adverb slowly modifies the verb decided, not leave. And in this sentence, Samuel decided to leave the party slowly. The adverb slowly describes or modifies the clause to leave the party, not decided. Now, some writers 
put an adverb of manner at the beginning of the sentence. This is only to catch the reader's attention. Have a look at the example below. Confidently, she entered the room. Now let's review the use of adverbs of manner and practice a bit. Remember that we use adverbs of manner to show how something happens. Read the following sentence and fill in the blank using the appropriate adverb of manner. I type the message. Hurry. I type the message hurriedly. Remember that we place adverbs of manner either before the main verb or after the object. Now read the following sentence and add an adverb of manner before the main verb and after the object. And the sentence ended. And the sentence ended abruptly. And the sentence abruptly ended. Also, remember to always place such adverbs as well, badly, hard, and fast after the verb. Rewrite the following sentence. Finn, well, on his exam, to do. Finn, did well on his exam. Remember the deposition of the adverb is very important when there is more than one verb in a clause. Read the following sentence and decide what the adverb modifies. They quietly asked us to leave the house. The adverb quietly modifies the verb asked. They asked us to leave the house quietly. The adverb quietly describes the clause to leave the house. Note that a writer can put an adverb of manner at the beginning of a sentence to catch the reader's attention. Rewrite the following sentence. He, the knife, to pick slowly. Slowly he picked up the knife. Here is a short story using adverbs of manner. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real-life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. I don't know what's going on with Kate. What do you mean? Well, she finishes her meal quickly and storms back to her room. When she is in the living room, she just quietly reads something and doesn't say a word. And today, she angrily slammed the door right in front of me. Maybe she's upset. Or is she angry with you? I don't know. Whenever I try to initiate a conversation, she answers passively aggressively. Be bold and ask her. You are siblings after all. She can't stay mad forever. And now it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the blanks with the adverbs from the box. Truthfully, badly, patiently, safely, recklessly. A. The score was 3 to 2. Even though we lost, I don't think we played. B. 
I don't want to be with her in the same car ever again. She drives. C. The plane landed on the runway. D. The judge asked him to answer the questions. E. Everyone waited for Mr. Smith to arrive. And now, read the following sentences and complete them by changing the adjectives in brackets into adverbs. A. Is anyone here? whispered Megan. Cautious. B. She spoke so quiet that the class couldn't hear her. C. You are late, said Jane, angry. D. I think our national football team played really good. E. She, happy, ran into her open arms. And now, let's check your answers. The score was 3 to 2. Even though we lost, I don't think we played badly. I don't want to be with her in the same car ever again. She drives recklessly. The plane landed safely on the runway. The judge asked him to answer the questions truthfully. Everyone waited patiently for Mr. Smith to arrive. Is anyone here? whispered Megan cautiously. She spoke so quietly that the class couldn't hear her. You are late, said Jane angrily. I think our national football team played really well. She happily ran into his open arms. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about adverbs of place. Let's get started. Remember that an adverb is a word or set of words that modifies verbs, adjectives, or other verbs. Note that adverbs usually modify verbs, telling us how, how often, when, or where something was done. Have a look at the example over here. We walked really slowly. Now the adverb slowly modifies the verb walked. It tells us how we walked. Now adverbs of place tell us where something happens. They do not modify adjectives or other adverbs. Have a look at the example below. I'm going back to school in a month. The adverb of place back modifies the verb going. It tells us where we are going. Remember that adverbs of place are usually placed after the main verb or after the clause that they modify. Have a look at the examples below. Come in. The adverb in modifies the main verb come. And in the sentence, Helen looked around, trying to find a familiar face in the crowd. Note that the adverb of place around modifies the main verb looked, where Helen looked. Now the adverbs of place that end in where express the idea of location 
without specifying a specific location or direction. Have a look at the example below. I couldn't find my cat anywhere. The adverb of place anywhere expresses the idea of location, but it does not specify a specific location or direction. And adverbs of place that end in words express movement in a particular direction. Have a look at the example below. Our dog likes to walk backwards. The adverb of place backwards expresses the movement of the dog. And with verbs of movement, here means towards or with the speaker. And there means away from or not with the speaker. Have a look at the examples below. You can hang your coat here. The adverb of place here tells us that you are standing near the hanger. And in the sentence, and you can put your shoes there. The adverb of place there tells us that you are pointing at the shoes rack. You are not standing near it. Note that here and there are combined with prepositions to make many common adverbial phrases. Have a look at the examples below. Could you come over here? Over is a preposition, and here the adverb. Together they make an adverbial phrase. What are you doing up there? Again, up is a preposition and there the adverb of place. And here and there are placed at the beginning of the sentence in exclamations or when emphasis is needed. Note that they are followed by the verb if the subject is a noun or by a pronoun if the subject is a pronoun have a look at the example below here comes the train the adverb of place here is used in the sentence to create emphasis and note that it's followed by the verb and its subject is train a noun and in the sentence, there it is. Note that the adverb of place there is followed by a pronoun, which is also the subject of the sentence. Now let's review the use of adverbs of place and practice a bit. Remember that we use adverbs of place to show where something happens. Now make sure to place them after the main verb or after the clause they modify. Create a sentence using the following words in the bracket. Close, when, the door, you, out, to go. Close the door when you go out. Also, remember that we use adverbs of place that end in where to express the idea of location without specifying a specific location or direction. Read the following sentence and underline the appropriate adverb of place. I want to go anywhere, nowhere, somewhere nice for our anniversary. I want to go somewhere nice for our anniversary. Note that we use adverbs of place that end in words to express movement in a particular direction. Rewrite the following sentence using an adverb of place that ends in words. The 
air balloon drifted up. The air balloon drifted upwards. Remember that here and there are combined with prepositions to make many common adverbial phrases. Read the following sentence and underline the adverbial phrase. I wonder how little Tom managed to get under there. Under there. Also remember the we place here and there at the beginning of the sentence in exclamation or when emphasis is needed. Note that they are followed by the verb if the subject is a noun or by a pronoun if the subject is a pronoun. Read the following sentences and fill in the blank using the appropriate forms of the words in the bracket. Here, the cake to come. Happy birthday! Here comes the cake. Happy birthday. There you to be. I've been looking for you. There you are. I've been looking for you. Here is a short story using adverbs of place. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real-life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Mike, have you seen my phone anywhere? I can't seem to find it. Try looking over there. I think you were sitting there last time. I've already tried looking there. Maybe I left it somewhere outside when I went shopping. I don't think you even took it with you. Wait, I can simply call you. There it is. And now it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with the adverbs from the box. Eastwards. There. Nearby, homewards, nowhere. A. After working the whole day straight, we headed. B. I have to go. I lost everything. C. We wanted to build a small park, but we lacked the funds. D. The ship sailed. E. Put the bags. We can unpack them later. Now, read the following sentences and underline the appropriate word or phrase. A. Mary turned over backwards and went back to sleep. B. There was a small lake outside, abroad. C. Is there everywhere, anywhere, I can find a perfect cup of coffee? D. Could you come over nearby, here? E. Here. The birthday girl comes. Comes the birthday girl. Now, let's check your answers. After working the whole day straight, we headed homewards. I have nowhere to go. I lost everything. We wanted to build a small park nearby, but we lacked the funds. The ship sailed Eastwards. Put the bags there. We can unpack them later. Mary 
turned over, and went back to sleep. There was a small lake outside. Is there anywhere I can find a perfect cup of coffee? Could you come over here? Here comes the birthday girl. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about adverbs of time. Let's get started. Remember that an adverb is a word or set of words that modifies verbs, adjectives, or other adverbs. Note that adverbs usually modify verbs, telling us how, how often, when, or where something was done. Have a look at the example over here. We walked really slowly. Note that the adverb slowly modifies the verb walked, and it tells us how we walked. Now, adverbs of time tell us when an action happened, for how long, or how often. Note that adverbs of time are invariable. Have a look at the example below. Sorry, I'll call you in a minute. The adverbial phrase in a minute tells us when I'll call. Note that adverbs of time are usually placed at the end of the sentence, as in the example below. I'll do it tomorrow. Note that the adverb of time tomorrow is placed at the end of the sentence. But sometimes these adverbs can be put at the beginning of the sentence, and that's to give a different emphasis. Have a look at the example below. Later, they noticed his absence. Note that the adverb of time later is placed at the beginning of the sentence to give emphasis. And in the adverbial phrases that tell us for how long something has been happening, for is always followed by an expression of duration, while since is always followed by an expression of a point in time. Have a look at the examples below. They'll be away for 20 days. Note that for is followed by an expression of duration, 20 days. And in this sentence, I haven't seen you since June. Since is followed by an expression of a point in time, which is June. Note that adverbs that tell us how often something happens express the frequency of an action. They are usually placed before the main verb, but after auxiliary verbs. Have a look at the examples below. Sarah usually wakes up at 7 a.m. Now the adverb of time usually is placed before the main verb, which in this case is wakes. But in this sentence, you must always be kind to others. Note that the adverb of time always comes before the auxiliary verb, be. But note that the main verb of the sentence comes after the auxiliary verb. But there is an exception, and that is when the main verb is to be, in which case, the adverb goes after the main verb. Have a look at the example below. I am never late. Note that the adverb of time never comes after the auxiliary verb to be, am. And if you need to use more than one adverb of time in a sentence, use them in the following order. One. How long? Two, how often? 
three when have a look at the example below peter worked at the mall for four days every week last year note that four days tells us how long every week tells us how often and last year tells us when Now let's review the use of adverbs of time and practice a bit. Remember that we use adverbs of time to show when an action happened or for how long it has been happening. Note that we place these adverbs at the end of the sentence. Create a sentence using the words in the brackets. Why, yesterday, you, to be absent. Why were you absent yesterday? Note that sometimes adverbs of time can be put at the beginning of the sentence, and that's to give a different emphasis. Create a sentence using the following words in the bracket. James to realize soon that he to make a mistake. Soon, James realized that he made a mistake. Also, remember that in the adverbial phrases that tell us for how long something has been happening, for is always followed by an expression of duration, while since is always followed by an expression of a point in time. Now read the following sentences and fill in the blanks using for or since. I've been waiting for you an hour. I've been waiting for you for an hour. Bill has been trying to find a job. May. Bill has been trying to find a job since May. Now we place adverbs that tell us how often something happens before the main verb, but after auxiliary verbs. Note that if there is a verb to be, then the adverb goes after the main verb. Now create a sentence using the following words in the bracket. We to buy groceries often together. We often buy groceries together. He to be late usually for classes. He is usually late for classes. And if you need to use more than one adverb of time in a sentence, make sure you use them in the following order. 1. How long? 2. How often? Three, when. Now read the following sentences and create a sentence using the following words in the bracket. Lily to study every day for five hours a month ago. She had a difficult exam at university. Lily studied for five hours every day a month ago. She had a difficult exam at university. Here is a short story using adverbs of time. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, Make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. 
when was the last time you cooked? I cook every day, so that must be today. When was the last time you took a bath? I don't remember really. I rarely take baths. I am more of a shower person. When was the last time you slept in? Oh, it was about a week ago. It was a wonderful Sunday. I woke up late, stayed in bed for a couple of hours, and just enjoyed life. Now it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the blanks with the adverbs from the box. Daily, for hours, today, every year, later. A. I don't feel like doing my laundry. B. This newspaper arrives. My grandpa reads it while eating breakfast all the time. C. When I was a kid, I would play video games. D. We had a great Christmas tradition. We sent postcards to all the relatives we have. E. I think my parents came home. I'll call you. Now read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with for or since. A. Peter just leaves if he waits for someone more than five minutes. B. We've been friends with Sarah, ages. C. Emily moved to Peru, and we haven't heard from her. D. You look much healthier. I saw you last time. E. She's been depressed months. She must see a doctor. Now let's check your answers. I don't feel like doing my laundry today. This newspaper arrives daily. My grandpa reads it while eating breakfast all the time. When I was a kid, I would play video games for hours. We have a great Christmas tradition. Every year, we send postcards to all the relatives we have. I think my parents came home. I'll call you later. Peter just leaves if he waits for someone for more than five minutes. We've been friends with Sarah for ages. Emily moved to Peru. And we haven't heard from her since. You look much healthier since I saw you last time. She's been depressed for months. She must see a doctor. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about prepositions. Overview. A preposition is usually a short word used to link nouns, pronouns, or phrases to other words within a sentence. Have a look at the example over here. If I'm not mistaken, her birthday is in May. The preposition in is used in the sentence to link the noun May to birthday. Her birthday. Note that prepositions do not change their form. Have a look at the example over here. I want what to go where to the movies, meaning that I had a desire to go to the movies. Now prepositions can consist of one, two, 
or more words. Have a look at the examples below. Josh went to the club instead of studying for his exam. There was a huge traffic in front of us. Now, prepositions can be divided into the following categories. A. Prepositions of place state the position or location of one thing with another. Have a look at the example below. Kate works at Starbucks. The preposition at tells us where Kate works. B. Prepositions of time denote specific time periods. For example, we usually go to our relatives at Christmas. Christmas is a specific time period. And at is used to denote this time period. C. Prepositions of direction or motion indicate movement from one place to the other. As in the example below, there is a great pub across the street. The preposition across tells us where the pub is and how to get there. D. Prepositions of manner express the manner in which something is done, as in the example below. You can't achieve success by doing nothing. The preposition by expresses the manner in which success is achieved. And it's not by doing nothing. E. Prepositions of cause, purpose, and reason indicate why, what for, or because of what something happens. Have a look at the example below. She couldn't attend the meeting due to some family issues. Now the prepositions due to tell us why she couldn't attend the meeting. Now let's review the use of prepositions and practice a bit. Remember that prepositions of place state the position or location of one thing with another. Read the following sentence and underline them. My sister lives in Oklahoma, but she is planning on moving to California. In also remember that prepositions of time denote specific time periods. Read the following sentence and underline them. I drank a cup of coffee in the morning and one more at noon. In At Note the prepositions of direction or motion indicate movement from one place to another. Read the following sentence and underline them. She was the person to work at Christmas or at Thanksgiving. At Note that prepositions of manner express the manner in which something is done. Read the following sentence and underline the preposition of manner. Anne usually goes to work by bus. By. Also note that prepositions of cause, purpose, and reason indicate why, what for, or because of what something happens. Read the following sentence and underline the prepositions of cause, purpose, and reason. I want to go to the fish market to buy something tasty for breakfast. 
two. Here is a short story using prepositions. Listen as I read, so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself, so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. What do you do for fun? I usually hang out with my friends. Sometimes we go to the movies together. Sometimes we throw parties at someone's place. A and you? That sounds cool. Well, I moved to the states in May, so I haven't really made new friends yet. All my friends are back home. Why don't you come over? I think you'll like my friends, and they'll like you. Oh, that would be great. Now. It's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following text and underline the prepositions. He pointed his finger in friendly jest and went over to the parapet, laughing to himself. Stephen Dedalus stepped up, followed him warily halfway, and sat on the edge of the gun rest, watching him still as he propped his mirror on the parapet. Dipped a brush in the bowl and lathered cheeks and neck. Stephen stood up and went over to the parapet. Leaning on it, he looked down on the water and on the mail boat clearing the harbor mouth of Kingstown. Ulysses by James Joyce. And now let's check your answers. In friendly jest, to the parapet, to himself, on the edge, off the gun rest, on the parapet, in the ball, to the parapet, on it, on. The water, on the mill boat, off Kingstown. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about prepositions of place. Let's get started. Remember. That a preposition is usually a short word used to link nouns, pronouns, or phrases to other words within a sentence. Have a look at the example over here. If I'm not mistaken, her birthday is in May. Note that the preposition in is used to link the noun May to her birthday. Now there are many types of prepositions, and among them are prepositions of place. Now they are used to show the position or location of one thing with another. Note that we usually use prepositions of place when we answer the question beginning with "where." Have a look at the example over here. Where do you live? I live in New York. The preposition of place "in" tells us where I live. New York. Now there are three main prepositions of place. A, at, denotes specific point or location of something. Have a look at the examples below. There is someone standing at the door. The preposition of place at denotes a specific location. The door. There weren't many people at the theater. It's Monday after all. Again, the preposition of place at denotes a specific location. The theater. And in the sentence. 
Alex lives at number 25 Emerald Street. The preposition of place at gives us or denotes a specific address. And in this sentence, Ashley works at Apple. The preposition of place at denotes a specific company or workplace. B. In. In implies that something is located in an enclosed space or within a larger area. Have a look at the examples below. I think I left my phone in the living room. Meaning that the living room is part of your house. And in this sentence, Jake lives in the U.S. He lives in Texas. In the first sentence, the preposition of place in refers to the country, U.S. And in the second sentence, the preposition of place in refers to the state. C. On. On implies that something is located on the surface. Have a look at the examples below. Could you grab my phone? It's on the coffee table in the living room. Meaning that it's on the surface of furniture, coffee table. And in this sentence, Jake's sister is on the west coast. She absolutely loves the Pacific. In this sentence, the preposition of place on implies that Jake's sister is located along a road, river, or by the sea, lake, etc. And in this sentence, Alex lives on the third floor. The preposition of place on implies that Alex lives on a certain floor in the building. And in this sentence, Sorry, I'll call you back. I'm on the train now. Again, the preposition of place on implies where I'm located. Public transport. My grandparents work on a farm. The preposition of place on in this sentence implies where my grandparents are located, which is on an open field, the surface of the earth. Now, sometimes you can use both at and in when you talk about the location, although there is a slight difference in meaning. Have a look at the following examples. My siblings are at the mall, meaning that you are stating the location in general. Your siblings could be inside the mall, somewhere at the entrance, or at the parking lot. And in this sentence, my siblings are in the mall now. It means that you are specifying that your siblings are inside the mall. That is the slight difference between at and in. Now, let's review the use of prepositions of place and practice a bit. Remember that we use prepositions of place when you answer the question beginning with where. Now, read the following dialogue and fill in the blanks using the appropriate prepositions of place. Where do you live? I live Paris. But right now, I'm living Madrid for a couple of weeks. I live in Paris, but right now, I'm living in Madrid for a couple of weeks. Also, remember that we use at to denote specific point or location of something. And we use in when something is located in an enclosed space or within a larger area. 
Now read the following text and fill in the blanks with either at or in. As you know, my sister Mary works Apple. She really likes it there as she doesn't work a tiny cubicle, but an open space office instead. Mary says it boosts her creativity. As you know, my sister Mary works at Apple. She really likes it there as she doesn't work in a tiny cubicle, but in an open space office instead. Mary says it boosts her creativity. Remember that we use in when something is located in an enclosed space or within a larger area. And we use on when something is located on the surface. Read the following text and fill in the blanks with either in or on. I can't believe there is so much storage space. The closet. And look at these cute pillows. The bed. And there are even flowers. The vase. The window sill. The room is just lovely. I can't believe there is so much storage space in the closet. And look at these cute pillows on the bed. And there are even flowers in the vase. On the window sill. This room is just lovely. Here is a short story using prepositions of place. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Anne, hurry up. The Smiths are waiting for us at the restaurant. I know, I know. I can't find my shoes. Have you tried looking for them in the closet? Not funny, Nick. I think I might have left them in the living room when I was taking pictures of my new shoes. There are some shoes on the bed. Aren't these yours? Oh, that's right. And now I need to find my phone. And I'm ready to go. It's right there on your bedside table. Oh, thanks. Love you. And now, it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with at, in, and on. A. My cat likes sleeping my bed when I'm work. B. Peter's relatives live the East Coast, so he doesn't visit them that often. C. Our kids love swimming the lake nearby. D. I am currently living Germany and doing my internship here. E. Were you the party too? I haven't seen you. F. Do you live with your parents or your own place? G. Kylie was the dentist's today. He needs some hugs in the evening. H. Meredith grew up a farm, Idaho. I. I left my headphones home. It's going to be a boring ride, the bus. J. There are so many tasty things. The menu. 
And now let's check your answers. My cat likes sleeping on my bed when I'm at work. Peter's relatives live on the east coast, so he doesn't visit them that often. Our kids love swimming in the lake nearby. I am currently living in Germany and doing my internship here. Were you at the party too? I haven't seen you. Do you live with your parents or at your own place? Kylie was at the dentist's today. He needs some hugs in the evening. Meredith grew up on a farm in Idaho. I left my headphones at home. It's going to be a boring ride on a bus. There are so many tasty things on the menu. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about prepositions of time. Let's get started. Remember that a preposition is usually a short word used to link nouns, pronouns, or phrases to other words within a sentence. Have a look at the example over here. If I'm not mistaken, her birthday is in May. Note that the preposition in in the sentence is used to link the noun May to birthday. Her birthday. Now there are many types of prepositions and among them are prepositions of time. Note that these prepositions are used to denote specific time periods. Now we usually use prepositions of time when we answer the question beginning with when. Have a look at the example below. When did you move to New York? I moved there in 2007. Note that the preposition of time in tells us when I moved to New York. Now there are three main prepositions of time. A. At. At denotes precise time. It's in the examples below. I'll pick you up at five. The preposition of place at in the sentence denotes a precise time. Five. And in the sentence, we're all going to be sleeping at midnight. Again, the preposition of time at denotes a precise time, which in this sentence is midnight. Note that at is also used with such expressions as at night, at weekend, at Christmas, at the moment, at present, at the same time. Have a look at the example below. Mr. Rufus isn't available at the moment. May I take a message? Note that in the sentence the preposition of time at is used with the expression the moment, at the moment. B. On. On is used for days and dates. Have a look at the examples below. I'm meeting up with my friends on Saturday, and on Sunday morning I'm flying to Seattle. In these sentences, the prepositions of time on are used for days, Saturday and Sunday. And in this sentence, Mike has the project presentation on 11th November. The preposition of time on is used for the date 11th November. Same in the sentence. My family does nothing on Christmas Day. Preposition of time on 
is used for the date, Christmas Day. C. In. In denotes longer period of time, like months, years, centuries, etc. Have a look at the examples below. The Parkers are moving to Greece in March. The preposition of time in is used to denote the month, March. And in the sentence, the story is said in the 80s. In is used to denote the century. Life in the Middle Ages wasn't like in a fairy tale. I don't know how people lived in the past. In these sentences, the prepositions of time in are used to denote longer period of time, the Middle Ages and the past. Note that in is also used with such phrases as in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Have a look at the example over here. Theo is an owl. He has a hard time getting up in the morning. Also note that we do not use prepositions before, last, next, every or this have a look at the sentences below i guess we'll see alice on next monday now this sentence would be incorrect because the preposition on is not supposed to be used before next the correct form would be i guess we'll see alice next monday now let's review the use of prepositions of time and practice a bit. Remember that we use at to denote precise time, and we use on for days and dates. Now read the following dialogue and fill in the blanks with at or on. Should I wake you up? 6. 1st January? Absolutely not. Why would you even do that? I just figured that if you start celebrating New Year, 11 p.m., you should be still up that hour. Should I wake you up at 6 on 1st January? Absolutely not. Why would you even do that? I just figured that if you started celebrating New Year at 11 p.m., you should be still up at that hour. Also remember that we use on for days and dates, and we use in for longer periods of time. Read the following text and fill in the blanks with on or in. My free time, I like to go to bars and listen to bands there. For example, I went to see the Ribs performing Sunday evening. It was simply amazing. Too bad that I had to work one day. And I couldn't stay for too long that night. In my free time, I like to go to bars and listen to bands there. For example, I went to see the Rips performing on Sunday evening. It was simply amazing. Too bad that I had to work on Monday and I couldn't stay for too long that night. Note that we use in with such phrases as in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening. But make sure not to use prepositions before last next, every, or this. Read the following text and fill in the blanks using the appropriate preposition of time. Clark usually takes a shower the morning and the evening. But 
This week, he is taking a shower three or four times a day. It's an unusually hot summer. Clark usually takes a shower in the morning and in the evening. But this week, he is taking a shower three or four times a day. It's an unusually hot summer. Here is a short story using prepositions of time. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. What does your summer look like? Well, I have my exams in June. I'll be studying in the mornings, in the afternoons, in the evenings, and at nights? No, not at nights. Nights are for sleeping only. I try not to mess up with my sleep schedule. That's a smart decision. Thanks. Then in a couple of weeks, I'll be backpacking with my friends. We haven't done it in such a long time. And on 4th of July? I'll be at my parents. Now, time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and fill in the gaps with at, on, or in. Sometimes no preposition is needed. A. I don't like working out the mornings. I'm super hungry after sleeping. B. Where will you be New Year's Eve? C. Carlo went to Spain last June and this time she'll go to Portugal. D. My parents were born the 60s. E. It rains a lot. Winter here. F. I don't like going out Friday evening. G. They're getting married 27th of August. H. Claudia lived in Peru, 2015. I, I don't want to do anything special. My birthday. J, Frank usually eats lunch, noon. Now, let's check your answers. I don't like working out in the mornings. I'm super hungry after sleeping. Where will you be on New Year's Eve? Carlo went to Spain last July, and this time she'll go to Portugal. My parents were born in the 60s. It rains a lot in winter here. I don't feel like going out on Friday evening. They're getting married on the 27th of August. Claudia lived in Peru in 2015. I don't want to do anything special on my birthday. Frank usually eats lunch at noon. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to talk about prepositions of direction and motion. Let's get started. Remember that a preposition is usually a short word used to link nouns, pronouns, 
or phrases to other words within a sentence. Have a look at the example below. If I'm not mistaken, her birthday is in May. Note that the preposition in in this sentence is used to link the noun May to birthday, her birthday. Now, there are many types of prepositions. Among them are prepositions of direction or motion. Note that these prepositions are used to show movement from one place to the other. Remember that we usually use prepositions of direction or motion when we answer the question beginning with where. Have a look at the example below. Where are you going? I'm going to the supermarket. Note that the preposition of direction or motion to tells us where we're going. The supermarket. Now there are several commonly used prepositions of direction or motion. A. To. To is used to show movement in a specific direction. Have a look at the examples below. I'll head off to work in a couple of minutes. In this sentence, the preposition of direction, to, tells us exactly where I'm headed. And in this sentence, Kimberly moved to Florida a year ago. Again, the preposition to in this sentence shows Kimberly's movement to Florida, which is a specific direction. Note that you can also use towards in the meaning in the direction of. Have a look at the example here. Why are these policemen running towards Eric? The preposition towards meaning in the direction of Eric. B. Into. Now, into is used to show movement into something. Enclosed space. While onto shows movement on top of something. The surface. Have a look at the example below. The dog jumped into the kennel while the cat leaped onto the roof of the kennel. Note that the preposition into in the sentence is used to show that the dog jumped inside the kennel. In this sentence, however, the preposition of direction or motion onto is used to show that the cat leaped on the surface of the kennel, on top of the kennel, not inside. C. Across. Across is used to show movement from one side to the other side of something. As in the example below, you can't walk across the street whenever you want, meaning that you can't walk from one side of the street to the other side of the street. D. Over. Over is used to show an upward and forward direction across something. As in the example below, the boys jumped over the fence and chased the cat. Meaning that the boys jumped upwards and chased the cat. E. Through. Through is used to show movement within an enclosed space from one point to the other. As in the example below, I don't like driving through the tunnels. I feel a bit anxious then. The preposition through in this sentence shows that I do not like driving inside the tunnel. F. Past. 
past is used to indicate movement near something while you are on your way to another location. Have a look at the example below. I waved at Mary, but she walked past me, meaning that she walked near me while I was on my way to another location. Now let's review the use of prepositions of direction or motion and practice a bit. Remember that we use to to show movement in a specific direction. And we use across to show movement from one side to the other side of something. Read the following dialogue and fill in the blanks with to or across. Where are you going? I'm going to the local bakery. They sell super delicious bagels there. It's right the street. I'm going to the local bakery. They sell super delicious bagels there. It's right across the street. Also remember that we use into to show movement into an enclosed space, while we use onto to show movement on top of something. Read the following text and fill in the blanks with into or onto. My dog jumped the couch next to me right when I opened the bag of jerky and put my hand it. My dog jumped onto the couch next to me right when I opened the bag of jerky and put my hand into it. Also note that we use through to show movement within an enclosed space from one point to the other. And we use past to indicate movement near something while you are on your way to another location. Now read the text below and fill in the blanks with through or past. The bike drove right me and I just fell from unexpectedness. But the person didn't stop or anything. He went the park and disappeared. The bike drove right past me, and I just fell down from unexpectedness. But the person didn't stop or anything. He went through the park and disappeared. Here is a short story using prepositions of direction or motion. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real-life conversation. After I'm done, Make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. Excuse me, sir. Could you tell me how I can get to the nearest supermarket? Surely. You have to go through the small park over there, then turn right and go past the cinema. Right on the corner, you'll see a huge supermarket sign. Just go across the street and there will be the entrance. Thank you very much. And now it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the correct preposition. A. Sarah's cat always jumps onto to her bed whenever she enters the bedroom. B. I usually go over through the park on my way home. C. Walk across through the street at the traffic lights. D. They walked into through the room and stood frozen. E. 
you are highly motivated when you are working past towards your goals. F. I need to go to towards the library to get some books for my research. G. This ferry can take you across over the river. H. The dog jumped through over the fence to greet its owner. I. Michael usually buys coffee in the morning, but this time he was running late, so he went to pass his favorite coffee place. J. The lady carefully stepped from the train into onto the platform. Now let's check your answers. Sarah's cat always jumps onto her bed whenever she enters the bedroom. I usually go through the park on my way home. Walk across the street at the traffic lights. They walked into the room and stood frozen. You are highly motivated when you are working towards your goal. I need to go to the library to get some books for my research. This ferry can take you across the river. The dog jumped over the fence to greet its owner. Michael usually buys coffee in the morning, but this time he was running late, so he went past his favorite coffee place. The lady carefully stepped from the train onto the platform. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to have a look at an overview of conjunctions. Let's get started. Conjunctions are words that link other words, phrases, clauses, or sentences together. Have a look at the example over here. Susan is an amazing wife and a wonderful mom. Note that the conjunction end in the sentence is used to link amazing wife and wonderful mom. Now, conjunctions add complexity to our speech. They also allow us to form complex sentences instead of using multiple short ones. Have a look at the examples below. Bran likes eating. He doesn't like cooking. He finds cooking boring. Now, instead of these multiple short sentences, we can create one complex sentence by using conjunctions, as in the example over here. Bran likes eating, but he doesn't like cooking, as he finds it boring. Note that conjunctions can be divided into the following categories. A. Subordinating conjunctions. Subordinating conjunctions link two clauses, a main or independent one and a subordinate, dependent one. Now the most commonly used subordinating conjunctions are although, as, because, if, though, unless, etc. Have a look at the example below. She won't speak with her parents unless they apologize first. Note that the main clause or the independent clause is she won't speak with her parents. And the subordinate clause or the dependent clause is 
they apologize first. Now these two sentences were linked together by using a subordinating conjunction unless. B. Correlative conjunctions. Correlative conjunctions connect two equal grammatical items. Now these conjunctions come in pairs, either, or, neither nor, not only, but also. Have a look at the example below. Either we go to the party or we stay at home. Note that we go to the party and we stay at home are two equal grammatical items. C. Compound conjunctions. Compound conjunctions are phrases which are used as conjunctions. Now, a compound conjunction has two or three words that go together. For example, so that, as long as, even though, etc. Have a look at the example below. Mike lied to his parents so that he could go to the party. Note that the compound conjunction so that is a phrase that is used as a conjunction in this sentence. D. Coordinating conjunctions. Coordinating conjunctions are used to link words, phrases, and clauses of equal importance in a sentence. Now, there are seven coordinating conjunctions. For, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. Now, you can remember these with the help of the acronym, FANBOYS. Have a look at the example below. Beth doesn't like cheese, yet she eats pizza nearly every day. Note that the clause Beth doesn't like cheese and she eats pizza nearly every day are of equal importance in the sentence. And they are connected with the coordinating conjunction yet. Now, let's review the use of conjunctions and practice a bit. Remember, the subordinating conjunctions link two clauses, a main or independent one and a subordinate, dependent one. Read the following sentence and underline the correct ones. Yet, if it is raining outside, take an umbrella so that, unless you want to get wet, If it rains outside, take an umbrella unless you want to get wet. Also remember that correlative conjunctions connect two equal grammatical items. Read the following sentence and underline the correct ones. Either, neither, did they message her afterwards, or, nor, did they invite her over again. Neither did they message her afterwards, nor did they invite her over again. Note that coordinating conjunctions are used to link words, phrases, and clauses of equal importance in a sentence. Read the following sentence and underline the correct ones. You claim to be allergic to dairy, yet, or, you eat cheese, for, and butter. You claim to be allergic to dairy, yet you eat cheese and butter. Here is a short story using conjunctions. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, Make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. I heard that Eric is moving to a new place. Is that true? Yeah, 
he is moving to a bigger apartment with his girlfriend. Even though they haven't been dating for that long, they decided to live together to save some money. Yeah, it actually makes sense as rent is so expensive right now. Totally. As long as they get along, I don't see a problem with them living together so soon. And now, it's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following text and underline the conjunctions. The studio was filled with a rich odor of roses, and when the light summer wind steered amidst the trees of the garden, there came through the open door the heavy scent of the lilac, or the more delicate perfume of the pink flowering thorn. As the painter looked at the gracious and calmly form he had so skillfully mirrored in his art, a smile of pleasure passed across his face and seemed about to linger there. But he suddenly started up, and closing his eyes, placed his fingers upon the lids, as though he sought to imprison within his brain some curious dream from which he feared he might awake. The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde And now, let's check your answers. And when? Or, as, and, and, but, and, as though. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Welcome to this tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about coordinating conjunctions. Let's get started. Remember, that conjunctions are words that link other words, phrases, clauses, or sentences together. Have a look at the example below. Susan is an amazing wife and a wonderful mom. Note that the conjunction end in the sentence is used to link amazing wife and wonderful woman. Now there are many types of conjunctions, and among them are coordinating conjunctions. Now these conjunctions are used to link words, phrases, and clauses of equal importance in a sentence. Have a look at the example over here. Sam complains about his job, yet he doesn't try to find a new job. Note that these two clauses, Sam complains about his job, and he doesn't try to find a new one, are of equal importance in the sentence. And they are connected with the coordinating conjunction, yet. Now remember that there are seven coordinating conjunctions, and they are for, and, nor, but, or, yet, and so. Now you can remember them with the help of the acronym FANBOYS. Let's have a look at the use of these coordinating conjunctions in a sentence. They couldn't afford to rent the apartment for it was too expensive. You can't have your cake and eat it. Samantha doesn't want to go out, nor does she invite us to our place. I was quite anxious at the beginning, but eventually I managed to pull myself together. You can call me or send a message when you get off from work. Ben says that he is busy all the time, yet he has time to play online games every day. Bill is allergic to dairy, so he doesn't eat any cheese. Note that in all the sentences that we have seen so far, the coordinating conjunctions are used to link two phrases or clauses of equal importance. Now let's review the use of coordinating conjunctions and practice a bit. Remember, the coordinating conjunctions are used to link words, 
phrases and clauses of equal importance in a sentence. Now read the following sentences and underline the coordinating conjunctions. Katie wanted to play with us, yet she was too scared to make a move. Yet, the Johns needed to pay the rent, but they ran out of money. But, they weren't on good terms with each other, nor did they try to change it. Nor, now rewrite the sentence so that they have the same meaning using the coordinating conjunction. Philip likes hiking. He is fond of camping too. That's why he spends a lot of time traveling. Philip likes hiking and camping, so he spends a lot of time traveling. I didn't want to call you because it was too late, but I sent you a message. I knew that you could read it later. I didn't want to call you for it was too late, yet I sent you a message so you could read it later. Here is a short story using coordinating conjunctions. Listen as I read so you can see how they are used in real life conversation. After I'm done, make sure you understand all the grammar and read aloud yourself so that you can work on your own fluency and pronunciation. My brother's birthday is coming up, yet I have zero ideas as to what to get him. Well, I doubt that gadgets are on your list for they're too expensive. Maybe there's something he likes a lot. He definitely loves cinema and everything cinema related. But I'm not sure what I can buy. I heard of this online shop where you can buy actual movie poster. Just find out what movie he likes the most so you can get exactly what he wants. That's an awesome idea. Thanks a lot. And now... It's time for you to practice on your own. Read the following sentences and underline the correct conjunction. A. Mike claims to be good at time management, so yet he does everything last minute. B. Lily wanted to thank the stranger. For but he was nowhere to be seen. C. I wasn't in the mood to cook dinner, but so we ordered a takeout. D. They didn't like our proposal, and nor did they suggest anything else. E. I wanted to see my friend in Seattle, but so I got sick and couldn't go that weekend. F. There was something charming and nor elegant in the way she spoke. G. He can't call you right now, for, and, there is no cell reception. At, their family lives in different states, yet, so, they don't often spend holidays together. My sister always gets up early. For, yet, she is running late every single day. J. Pete doesn't exercise, nor, but, 
Does he eat healthy? And now let's check your answers. Mike claims to be good at time management, yet he does everything last minute. Lily wanted to thank the stranger, but he was nowhere to be seen. I wasn't in the mood to cook dinner, so we ordered a takeout. They didn't like our proposal, nor did they suggest anything else. I wanted to see my friend in Seattle, but I got sick and couldn't go that weekend. There was something charming and elegant in the way she spoke. He can't call you right now, for there is no cell reception. Their family lives in different states, so they don't often spend holidays together. My sister always gets up early, and she is running late every single day. Pete doesn't exercise, nor does he eat healthy. Thank you for watching this tutorial.